to, for August 2nd, 2022 to order, and I present the Honorable Mayor John View. Thank you, President LaFlam, and everyone welcome to City Recording Hall. Recording in progress. Thank you, President LaFlam, and welcome everyone to City Hall. Uh, I do have quite a few mayor's orders that I'd like to get through quickly, and also a couple of things I'd like to share with the general public. Mayor, before you start, I just want to um, say that uh, we were in executive sessions. That's why we were a little late and went longer. Um, usually we're always on time, but it went a little longer in executive session. So here we are. Thank you. No, oh, thank you. So the first mayor's order is order that the sum of $284.65 be hereby appropriated to the following named account. Assessors, a special, uh, I'm sorry, assessor suspense Assessor's expense account for travel. Said amount has to be taken from the stabilization account. And what you can see from the background information, I know that our assessor, Laura McCarthy, is here, is that uh, there was a communication issue in regard to some training and some reimbursement, and uh, we need to reimburse for some travel expenses. Any questions about Mayor's Order 1? I'm sure Laura can answer them if I haven't already. And the reason why it has to come out of stabilization is because 2022, that year's been closed out and we're now in 2023. So we can no longer uh, pay out of 2022's expenses, line items anymore. Well, thank you for your consideration. We'll move on to Mayor's Order 2, is the appropriation of $270 to the following named account, police expense account for subsidence of persons from the available funds in the stabilization fund it's actually a similar course of action. We had some police officers that went to training where lunch was not provided, and uh, they were asking for some reimbursements, and it was actually quite a bit of training, if you can see from the background information. So I think they were at least hopefully frugal with their lunch purchases. Chief, anything you'd like to add? I know Chief Major is here. training course went over the course of the fiscal year and they didn't put in their reimbursement slips prior to the end of the fiscal year. That's what uh, this request is for. Any questions about Mayor's Order 2? Thank you for your consideration. Order that the sum of $655.77 be hereby appropriated to the following named account, police expense account for rental of equipment, Set amount is to be taken from the available funds in the stabilization fund. And if you can see from the background information, uh, this was uh, a, for a printer that, again, uh, an invoice that would be for 2022 that we cannot pay for out of 2023's budget. Chief, anything you'd like to add? It's a leasing of a, a new printer. Yes, it was uh, for, I believe it was several printers throughout the station that we have on lease. Okay. and. Um, unfortunately, the amount that was incurred through the, the printers exceeded the amount that we had budgeted. That's what we are requesting the extra funds for, for that. Any questions about Mayor's Order 3? Thank you for your consideration. Mayor's Order 4, Mayor's appropriation of $1,000 to the following named account building salary account for out of rank from the available funds in the stabilization account. As you can see from the background information, I don't see a building commissioner here, but what's happened is uh, we need to pay one of the clerks out of rank. We had a, a, uh, one of the employees in the building department has moved to a different position here at City Hall. So therefore we have duties and responsibilities that needed to be fulfilled that are being done by one of our part-time employees. So this will help with the overtime until that position is per permanently filled. Any questions about Mayor's Order 4? Thank you for your consideration. Mayor's Order 5, it's the appropriation of $34,800 to the following named account, police special account for the purchase of bulletproof vests from the available funds in the stabilization fund. Mm -hmm. I know our chief is here and you can look at your background information. We need to upgrade 29 of our bulletproof vests. They'll be expiring. They have a five year life. And we wanna make sure that our police officers have the equipment they need to not only keep themselves safe, but to protect us. So 
Chief, anything you'd like to add? Yes, thank you, Mayor. We're asking for the consideration for the funds to replace the 29 vests for our officers' protection. And along with that, we do get reimbursement funds, both from the federal government and the state, state government as well, which should cover the entire cost of these vests. The most important part is the reimbursement from the grant, so thank you, Chief. Order that the sum of $324,507.06 be hereby appropriated to the following named account. Police special account for the purchase of cruisers. Said amount will be taken from the stabilization fund for capital budgeting. And as everyone knows here in the city council and for our viewing audience, the city of Chicopee took $2 million and put it aside and that was for our capital needs and capital equipment purchases. So we had to do that because at the end of the fiscal year, there are some things that the city actually needs, and that's a whole story that I'll get into very shortly. Uh, it's been very difficult to get vehicles, and we're trying to maintain our vehicles. So these are the urgent needs, and what we like to do is purchase our vehicles for our, our police officers. They run 24-7. And we have a, uh, the request here is for six cruisers. One of them will be a low profile vehicle. The other will be standard patrol cars. Any questions about the request? George. Yeah, thanks, Mayor. Uh, Chief, do we know when we might be able to get these in? Because I know that with um, uh, the problem with vehicles now, it, it seems that you have to order them pretty far in advance. So do we have like an anticipated or expected date when they might be coming in, please? I know Mr. Reisick from CMG has six earmarked already that I believe are at MHQ. So it's just a matter of getting the uh, funding appropriated. And those vehicles are already there for us with our names on it. So it's not like we have to order them and have to wait six or seven months. They'll be available as soon as we can get out there and get them equipped. Okay, thank you. Follow-up question. Do we have any trade in value of any of our present cruisers to offset this cost? We do. I, I believe currently we're looking at trading in five of them. I don't know the exact trade in value. Mr. Isaac had expressed a, a sum of approximately $1,500 for one of the vehicles. I don't know if that's standard across the board, though, sir. Okay. All right. Thank you. Thanks, Chief. Thanks, Mayor. Thank you. Yeah. President LaFlam. Yes. Um, I I'm glad that we're, we're ordering these cruisers now, too, because I, I understand we have some brand new ones that are waiting for parts, too, um, that they can't get the parts like chips in that form that uh, are new cruisers. That's why we see more and more are parked behind the police department is because right. they're waiting for parts. So we need some extra vehicles. Um, you can't just go anywhere to uh, United Rentals and get cars for cruisers. So I'm glad we have the extra spares that we do because, uh, as you know, as I was mentioned to me, uh, some of our brand new ones are down right now uh, with some concerns with parts for them. So uh, in light of today's... Uh, manufacturing of product for the cities and towns, uh, I'm glad we're moving forward because there'll be a while before we get it. And I know um, right down the road, uh, the DBW is going to be talking about vehicles too. That's uh, a couple years out probably. So yeah. thank yes, you. We are, we are very fortunate that we were able to earmark those cars in advance. I know other departments are struggling to, to feel their fleets right now. Thank you, Chief. So one of the department heads, uh, Chief Major, is happy. I can tell you that the others are very frustrated. It's been very difficult. We're still waiting for some of the purchases that you approved last year. Mm -hmm. And getting those trucks has been, um, frankly, they're not taking orders for 2023. Mm -hmm. So right now we're uh, waiting for them to give us a green light to put in orders for 2023 for our capital needs. So as members of the capital committee, I know that Chief Stamborski is here, Chief Major, uh, Superintendent of DPW, our treasurer and our auditor, myself, uh, it's been very frustrating because, uh, you know, we need some of this, these pieces of equipment and we're very thankful to the city council and past administrations for what they've done to make sure that we maintain a fleet. And I, and, and I can tell you that our central maintenance garage does a great job too. But as these vehicles start coming towards the end of their useful life, uh, we try to be a little more proactive with them. And I can say that we've been very fortunate, but I can tell you right now, one of our sanitation trucks is down and they can't get the parts. 
you can't get the trucks and you can't get the parts. So it's been very frustrating. And I think a lot of people are seeing that with new purchase of, uh, when you're out to look and purchasing a new vehicle, uh, the chips are not available. I mean, everyone, it's no secret. They're trying to manufacture them right here in the United States. And we're hopeful that comes uh, sooner than later. And it's not just that part of it, it's the actual parts as well. Well, they're hard to find. So thank you for your consideration for Mayor's Order 7. We'll move on to Mayor's Order 8. It's the appropriation. I'm sorry, you're on Mayor's Order 7. Sorry, Mayor 7. Mayor's Order 7, the appropriation of $64,600 to the following named account, fire special account for improvements to Station 8 from the available funds in the Stabilization Fund, and again from the Capital Budgeting Fund. And from the background information, you can see that we're talking about, uh, this is for Station 8, which is located on James Street. And there's some concern about the floor. And I know that Chief Stamborski is here to talk about that. And he's put this request in. I believe this is the second year it's been in, in our capital needs. And what's happening is you're, we're getting a, a, a lift of about a couple of inches, or just over, is it almost two inches, Chief? Uh, and we need to resurface the floor before someone gets hurt. Yeah, it's actually a little, a little more minor than that. It's approximately three eighths to an inch to, to half an inch, an inch in, in areas. And it's slowly been delaminating. There's been multiple repairs to it. But what really drew my attention this year, I received a call from one of the captains at that station and uh, we were doing a tour post COVID. We started inviting kids back into the, into the uh, departments for tours and a young child tripped and uh, face planted. So we were very concerned about getting this fixed properly. And it's, uh, it, we had a couple different, uh, Scott Chapdelaine connected us with a concrete expert that came in and estimated for us. They have to grind it down and uh, get it to adhere properly, then they epoxy it, and um, the whole project will still have to go out to bid, but that's the, the uh, background on it. And you can see from the background information, they are in black and white, but it does do some justice here. You can see the pictures where it's rutting and uh, certainly becoming a problem. Jim? Mayor, there's some of this money, these projects, are, are they being funded by COVID money? This project is not being funded by COVID money, Jim. It doesn't qualify for that. Okay, what happened to the $10 million <clears throat> that we moved? And where did that go? So this is indirectly, yes. So $2 million has put in, been put into the capital needs account. Okay, so we did So that's this, in a sense, you could call it this money, yes. Yeah, because I, I, I think the public ought to know that these are projects that probably, <clears throat> excuse me, probably wouldn't get done <clears throat> if it was Thank on you, a Mike. tax dollar from the local community. But we got this money from the state and the federal government, as everybody did during COVID. So <clears throat> this so, is a project that needed to get done, and we have the funds that we need to spend it, like you said. Exactly. And it's something so, that we need to do, it, and it's not going to impact the future because it's a one-time payment. When I, and I think that's the way to go. No, thank you, Jim. And I think it's best for me to explain that to the general public quickly. <clears throat> and simply what has happened is the city has taken $10 million out of our ARPA money and putting that into as a standard loss for the city through COVID-19. Yeah. So that money has now gone into our general fund and it can be used for anything uh, other than the restrictions with the ARPA funds that are really basically limiting to what we can use funds for. So this will allow us to pay for things like this. So. Thank you, Jim, for bringing that to the public's attention, including me. Oh, thank you. Yeah. Any questions about Mayor's Order 7? Thank you for your consideration. Mayor's Order 8. Order that the sum of $350,000 be hereby appropriated to the following named account, file spe uh, fire special account for the purchase of an ambulance. Said amount will be taken from the capital budgeting fund. Uh, as you can see from the background information and uh, just having conversations with our chief, we're waiting for last year's ambulance that you approved. And we expect that to be coming in hopefully December. December, yes. <clears throat> and I, case, I can say that these ambulances certainly, uh, they run 24-7. And like I had mentioned about finding parts and other things, it makes a lot of sense. This is a need and it's not a, a wish list item. So we want to make sure that the fire department has the ambulances uh, available when you call. Chief, anything you'd like to add? We want to order this one. 
Uh, no, I'd just like to add, as you gentlemen were speaking about earlier with regard to getting vehicles in, it, it's quite a delay. We're expecting that this ambulance may take up to two years to get in from what they're, they're telling us for all the reasons that I won't go over it again, but that we have already mentioned. Um, the, the one that we purchased in 19, 2019 has 43,000 miles on it. And the other ones are upwards of 122, 121, and we have one at 96,000 miles. So we, we're trying to stay ahead of the curve with this purchase. Right. Sure. George. Yeah, thanks, Mayor. Thanks, Chief. Um, it's my understanding, too, that we can get some type of trade-in allowance as well to try to offset this cost of $350,000. <clears throat> yes, typically we get uh, somewhere around $6,000 for the last three years we've been getting for them. <coughs> Due to the fact that we put the impact ambulance on the road, uh, we're considering retaining one of these as an extra spare for if one of the three frontline pieces go down. Um, we're going to, it may be two years from now when we're having that discussion, but we're going to certainly keep an eye on it. And uh, fortunately, thanks to the funding, we have a phenomenal mechanic now, oh. and he's keeping our whole fleet in great shape. So we're hoping he keeps these up as well. Okay. Sure. Don't All right. Thanks, in. Chief. Thank you. You're welcome. Um, I just want to understand, we just had budget hearings. Why weren't any of these costs included in the budgets? Because these are, most of these are going to be one-time purchases. Some of them are not annual. So we've taken it, like Councilor Tillotson had said, we took the money aside and put it in. Uh, please know, I, I believe everyone on the council has been made aware that we took that $2 million, you approved it, to put into this capital needs account. So this is for capital equipment and the needs, for example, like floor resurfacing and the next item on the agenda. What happens is our money uh, gets uh, closed out on June 30th, and we have to wait for free cash to get recertified, which happens in September, October. Uh, right, Laura, roughly? We get our recertified uh, free cash. So the only funds available would have been stabilization funds. So we, mm -hmm. we took $2 million yeah. and put it into that stabilization money. account specifically for capital needs. Okay. I hope that answers your question. So again, thank you for your consideration. And uh, Chief, stay right there. Okay. Order that the sum of $313,341 be hereby appropriated to the following named account, fire special account for improvements to station five. As you can see from the background information, uh, what's happening at Station 5, there is an underground storage tank. The tank stores 1,000 gallons of diesel fuel, and we need to remove that tank. And also, in lieu of that, uh, the parking lot is in disrepair, and we'd also like to repair the parking lot. I can tell you that there's been some, there's been an actual letter uh, from me on your desk and that estimate that we had received with the help of our engineering department was underestimated. So we're hopeful that you'll be able to uh, adjust that amount from 313 to 413,000 and change. 100 grand more. Chief, anything you'd like to add? Yes, uh, this is another situation we've been keeping an eye on for quite some time. Currently, it's showing signs uh, where that tank is located. There's a depression in the pavement. We're starting to be concerned with that. That coupled with the fact that it's a 24-year-old tank that's in the ground, and we're trying to uh, head off any sort of leaks or potential environmental issues in the future. And uh, we feel that that would be the perfect time once a quarter of the parking lot is dug up to remove this tank to do proper drainage and repave the entire lot. Any questions, Frank? Yes. Yeah. Did we go out for an RFP on this? No, we'll have to from this point once oh, it's approved. Oh, this is just an estimate, right? Correct. Now. Just an estimate. We'll have to go out to bid after this. Okay. And this is going to be an above ground tank, correct? Yeah, the, the finished new product one. is going to be a new lot above ground tank of 500 gallons. And this will be done after the, I know where we got money coming forward too for the parking lot to be done. So all this will be done prior to the parking lot being done? Yeah, this is, this entire cost is for removal. Uh, drainage system over there, paving, and the new above-ground pump. Thank you. You're welcome. Thank you. Thank cool. you. Thank you. Uh, Frank sort of asked my question, particularly given the uh, subject matter of above-ground versus underground storage. It's been uh, very popular lately. So this will be an above-ground storage, and in terms of safety and security, you feel very comfortable with that? 
That's correct. I mean, they do it two different ways. Uh, they do what they call a con vault, which is what we've done at Station 4 and Station 8. Uh, it looks like a big concrete rectangle, so to speak, and it's got quite a bit of protection to it. They still put bollards out in front, so in case a vehicle comes at it or whatever. And the other way they can do it is a double wall steel above ground tank like we have at the safety complex. Uh, but that seems to be the trend in the industry now. Thank you, Chief. You're welcome. Thank you. Uh Thank you for your consideration. Mayor Order 10, I'm going to defer to City Council President. Order that the City Council accept a donation in the amount of $100 from Councilwoman Mary Beth Piniak Costello to the Chicopee Council on Aging. Said donations was for the Senior Safety Lunch and Learn event held on July 14, 2022 and accepted in accordance with General Laws at Mass General Laws, Chapter 44, Section 53A. Uh, Again, uh, one of our council, uh, Mary Beth, has donated $100, and it's, it's pretty self-explanatory here, and we'll vote on that um, come forward. Thank you. Thank you. We'll move on to Mayor's Order 11. Order that the sum of $317,603 be hereby appropriated to the following named account, BPW Sanitation Special Account, for the purchase of a side loader. Said amount will be taken from the sanitation revolving account for the waste zero yellow bag account. Um, as you know, uh, like I had mentioned earlier, it's very hard to get vehicles. I know that our superintendent of DPW, Elizabeth Patello, Elizabeth Batista is, <laughs> is on the call. Uh, Liz, can you just share a little bit? I believe we're, we're about to receive our mini packer that we ordered last year and I believe we're also about to receive one of our sanitation trucks in the next few months. They're being built now, I believe. So no, so the mini packer we actually ordered over a year and a half ago, and we are supposed to be receiving it within the next few weeks based on yes. the last estimated delivery date. Um, Al did get an update for the two side loaders that we ordered last fall. Uh, I think one we ordered in August and one in October. And they now have an estimated build date of November. November. So uh, we will probably not get those in until uh, late winter, early spring. But the goal is, is to get an order placed in the queue, considering uh, how far, how long we're having to wait for these to get built. So um, to keep in, in, on track with our replacement of the uh, side loaders and well, sanitation vehicles, whether it's a side loader or a rear packer, depending on the year, um, keep that going so that we're cycling them out and not having to then, you know, have a catastrophic situation where we're having to purchase multiple at the same time. And with these lead times, it's really, uh, you know, not something that we want to uh, gamble with. Thank you, well said. And I can say this is my understanding, one of our trucks, we're waiting for a part. We can't get a part. So one of our uh, right now side loaders is, is uh, sidelined as we wait for parts, which I said earlier, are very difficult to get right now. So we want to be proactive and get in front of this because it might be a couple of years before we receive this one if approved tonight. So thank you for your consideration for Mayor's Order 11. Any questions? Thank you, Superintendent. Mayor's Order 12, order that the City Council accept the donation of $199,900 from the Food Bank of Western Mass to the City of Chicopee. Said donation will be used to cover the difference between the available grant funds from the Food Bank Infrastructure Project and the lowest qualified bid, and the funds are accepted in accordance with Mass General Law Chapter 44, Section 53A. So uh, I know that our city planner Lee Pouillot is here. I can tell you that there's a, what's happened is the city has been working with the Western Mass Food Bank and for their infrastructure, we were very fortunate for their infrastructure to get a grant. And that grant, I believe, was for about $1.4 million and some change. It's not enough to cover the qualified bid. So therefore, we're receiving a donation from the Western Mass Food Bank, which would help to make sure that the taxpayers are not paying for the site work and that this would cover the full expense of the bid. Pretty you much. don't need me tonight, Mayor. <laughs> I don't need it. So any questions about uh, Mayor's Order 12? No. 
Thank you. And thank thank you. you for your consideration. Thank you, Lee, for being here. Okay. Mayor's Order 13. Be in order that the, oh, let me see here. Be it ordered that the City Council hereby amend code section 77-1A personnel by deleting, quote, 17 sergeants, sergeants and in inserting 19 sergeants and deleting special officers as they from time to time be appointed. Uh, section 77-1 personnel, the Police Department of the City of Chicopee on that note would then consist of one chief, five captains, seven lieutenants, and with your approval of this ordinance change, 19 sergeants and not more than 120 patrolmen and such number of reserve patrolmen as uh, prescribed in by chapter 314 of the acts of 1986. I know our chief is here and I know our chief has a vision and I can talk a little bit about it, but I, chief, I'm sure you're probably better spoken uh, at it than I am. I can tell you that I support the chief uh, for those who don't know, Patrick Major is our, our new chief of police, and uh, he's committed to making sure that the city of Chicopee is a safe place to live, work, and raise a family. Uh, and he and I see eye to eye on many things, and one of them is this. We want to make sure that uh, we're doing everything we can to keep this community safe. And Chief, if you want to elaborate a little bit about what the position is, and. One thing I'm excited about is the C3 expansion into Willamancet, and the other is for IT reasons, and I won't steal your thunder, go ahead. You just did it. Uh, he did it again. Yeah, he did it all for you. <laughs> so what uh, I did is I asked for a review of our supervisory structure. Myself and uh, my command staff sat down recently and looked at where we were and what we thought we were gonna need going forward. And uh, as a result of that, we came up that we were in need of two additional sergeant spots. One of the sergeant spots would uh, be for our IT department. Uh, one of the officers that was in the IT department recently promoted to sergeant, and that's uh, Sergeant Matt Post. We were fortunate to have Matt on our department. Uh, extremely smart individual. He, he's been our IT go-to guy for quite a while. So Sergeant Post uh, was taken out of IT and put back into patrol as the needs of the department obviously came before me having to have him in a specialized spot that he's been in. But as a result of that, we do have a, a dire need to replace him, put him back into that spot. We have programs, a uh, majority of our department now relies on technology. Software investigative programs, and Matt has been a huge uh, part of getting those to us and keeping them working properly. I'd like to be able to have the extra spot to get Matt back in there and to supervise the other officer that's currently in there, as well as possibly down the road once uh, the manning levels get up, having another patrolman in there to assist. They currently oversee, as I said, our IT software programs, which could involve uh, downloads of investigative interviews, um, murder interviews, sexual assault interviews, which is law enforcement specific. We do get great support from the city IT department, but we do have our own needs, and that's definitely one of them. Some of the software that also involves the cameras that uh, the city has, Matt's been aces for us on getting that program out, uh, working with us to, to find what the needs are for the city to position the cameras, and also working with city IT again if there's technical difficulties with the cameras or, or positioning of. The other spot I'm looking to fill is uh, a new C3 um, division down in Willamancet, and with the, the additional sergeant for that and the upcoming graduating classes coming out of the academy, I'd be able to fully staff a C3 in Willamancet. The unit down in the center, we were fortunate enough to be able to put them back to, to full staffing recently, and they've been serving the needs of the center area for a couple of years now. I hear very positive results. They help with homeless issues. They help with quality of life issues. There are positive presidents, uh, positive presence in the center. They hold uh, the weekly meetings down there. And they address <laughs> the needs of the residents that they serve, and that's uh, a big reason why we want to get that going and we'll advance it as well. Thank you. Any questions? Sure, Jim. Yeah, <clears throat> this is this needs an ordinance, correct? Mm -hmm. Correct. Yeah, <clears throat> it's not an ordinance format. That's why I asked the question. It doesn't say to be ordained, so we'll 
send it to the Ordinance Committee. Uh, Thank you. Now make its first reading and send it to the Ordinance Committee. Yeah, okay. Appreciate it. Yep. Yes, President. Yes. Thank you. Um, I'm glad to see I, I had a meeting with you uh, about this whole thing, and I thank you for sending a letter to me on behalf of the whole City Council so they could uh, look at it ahead of time, and it really helped because we had some communications back and forth. Um, the one thing I think is very important is the IT person. Um, as you know, uh, IT is almost everything in our lives today, and particularly with the accident that just happened, I happened to see the IT guy down at the bridge. Uh, downloading all the information off the camera. So this is something that we're a new way, uh, new way of life is a police officer uh, is in control of that because of the issues, the sensitivity of the issues of, of controlling that. So I'm in favor of this tonight of these positions. I think uh, as you, as you uh, become the new, as you are the new chief and doing you know, your ways of changing things, especially like the C3 in Willamance, I'm, I'm glad for that too. Um, I did question you on that. If you remember, mm -hmm. I asked you why do we need two sergeants for two C3s, and you explained it, the importance of why you wanted them. So I want to thank you personally for all the information that you gave me so I was able to feed some back to the city councilors. So thank you very much. I appreciate it. Thank you. Mary Beth was next, and then you, Bob. Thank you. Um, Mike. Oh, I'm very sorry. Uh, thank you, Police Chief Major. This is a wonderful idea. Your, uh, your letter to the mayor explains your needs very well. And I think the last statement indicates the importance of supervision, which you see. So you're proactive and not reactive. And you indicate these two positions will limit the possibility of liability-related issues for failure to properly supervise. So you have our city always in your heart, and I appreciate that. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Chief. Mayor's Order 14. That's the Chapter 7. Mr. Mayor. Oh, I'm sorry, Bob, I apologize. I have one question uh, on the... Vice President Zigorowski, you have the floor. That's right. Thank you. Chief, uh, the C3 in this Chigabee Center, will that be manned? seven days a week? The C3 in the center, there's three officers. There's a sergeant and two patrolmen. Their current schedule is our, our D group, which is Monday through Friday. They have the availability to flex that if they need it at their convenience or at the convenience of um, the city. So if there's issues that need to be addressed, they can you know, cut their normal hours and work a Saturday, a Sunday, or an evening shift if need be. Because one of the questions that I get from local businessmen downtown, they like, they really like seeing the patrol officer walking around downtown. I know we've had them before, and I'd like to see this continue because I think the business community will feel a lot safer having a police officer coming in downtown. I know they're walking around, but I'd like to see more often them down there, that's all. Yes, absolutely, and I know, and I want to uh, give my appreciation to the council and to the mayor for allowing us to keep getting our staffing level up to where it needs to be. And the more we increase our, our staffing level and get more recruits out of the academy, those re recruits in turn will more than likely fill roles on the, uh, the patrol shifts, which will allow us to get more walking beats out there. Okay. Right now, the, I know a lot of the C3 guys have been out riding the bicycles, and it may not be walking, but that's a great way to get out and get direct interaction with uh, the citizens downtown as well. Yeah, I agree. Thank you, Chief. Hey, hey Bob, we do also encourage park and walks as well, so hopefully you'll be seeing some of them as well. Thank uh, you. Thank sure. you, Mayor. All set. Del Marina. I just want to add that I have actually witnessed many of them walking their beats, and I've you know, parked to, to go to some of the downtown businesses and walked a bit of their beat with them and chatted with them, and they're doing a really great job, so thank you. Uh, I think it's really important. Community policing is super important, um, and I've had conversations with you about this, so I, I thank you for, for bringing that to Willamette as well. It's very necessary. Thank you. Thank you, and thank you for your consideration. Thank you, Chief. Uh, Mayor's Order 14 is Chapter 7, Ordinance Revisions, and I know they're, I don't believe they're highlighted, but I, I Jim, if I may, uh, it's been brought to my attention that from members of the school committee and also members of the city council 
that when salary adjustments were done because there haven't been raises in nearly 14 years approximately, I believe is, it's been a very long time. So there's been a request, uh, uh, for those who don't know, an independent study was done approximately two years ago, and that's the information that's in here now. And the, uh, if approved, uh, I believe that the city council president would receive an increase, uh, actually everyone would receive an increase of $2,000 and school committee would receive an increase of $1,500. Jim? Yeah. <clears throat> in order to avoid the confusion that 27 was put in by mistake in the, in the agenda, <clears throat> because 14 is the one that has the, uh, the updated version as to when the counselors are gonna get an increase in their pay. It also has a built-in here uh, <clears throat> timeline between zero and six, and and using a, a, a different method to c calculate a raise in between that time frame. But 27, if you notice, if, if it's already been signed and, and sealed. It was somehow it just got put in for, by mistake. So I just wanted to let you know that. So just for clarity, it wouldn't take effect until January of 2024 either because the city council cannot give themselves a raise. So that would be uh, January would be uh, first of January 24th. First of January, thank you. Uh, what was that, Mike? Okay. In addition to those, Jim. Yeah, that's the one that's, yeah. yeah. Jim, this in is in addition, addition to those. What's that? 27 is in addition to those. <coughs> we'll take 27 has already been passed, it's already signed. Correct. So, so it this would need be. To go in twice. It doesn't include these changes, though, Joe. No, it doesn't. 14 does. That's my point. Correct. Okay. So 27, we can kind of overlook. I think we're on the same page. Okay. Thank we're you. on the same page, Mayor. Thank you for your consideration uh, on behalf of the city councilors and the school committee. Mayor's Order 15. You're hereby notified that this day... Um, I've appointed Brother Vincent Vivian. I can proudly say that he's willing to serve on the Commission of Disability, mm -hmm. and he'll be an alternate member serving for a term of three years um, and expiring on the day, first day of July 2025. So uh, again, I'm excited to announce that Brother Vivian has decided to volunteer and join our Commission on Disability and, uh, and help that commission with the decision-making and uh, Certainly a mentor to me, and I'm hopeful that you'll consider that appointment. Um, I did tell uh, Brother Vincent that he didn't have to come today um, because I'm assuming because of he's a new appointment that you'd be sending him to committee, and, and I'm sure uh, you'll all enjoy meeting him when he comes to the HR subcommittee. So thank you for your consideration. Mayor's Order 16, you're hereby notified that I have this day appointed Katie Pyers and she's willing to serve on our ambulance commission. Katie is here to, today, and again, her term would be uh, serving until the 1st of January of 2025. Uh, Katie is here and at the microphone. If you'd like to ask her any questions. Hello, I just wanted to come tonight to give you a face to go with the name. I know many of you don't know me. Um, I have been a resident here in Chicopee for 24 years. Um, my husband and I have been homeowners for seven years, owning our home on Beaumont Ave. Um, we have two kids who go to school here in Chicopee, um, so we're very invested in the community, and I saw the opportunity to volunteer. It's uh, something I do have some experience in. I've worked in medical billing and coding um, for 15 years in various capacities from medical billing, analyst, and I'm in IT now. So um, I saw there was an opening, something that I've done in my past, and I just wanted to volunteer. Thank you. So, thank you, Katie, for your willingness to volunteer and serve. And I can say her background is a perfect fit for the Ambulance Commission. Thank, yeah. you. thank you. Thank you. Any questions for Katie? Or thank you for your consideration. Yeah. And I'll defer to City Council President for Mayor's Order 17 through 20. Order that the City, city Council accept the map trap help helping hand mill mini grant in the amount of. $1,000 from the Mass DOT Rail and Transit Division to the Chicopee Council on Aging. Said grant is accepted in accordance with Mass General Law, Chapter 44, Section 53A. 
Um, it's $1,000 to, to go be donated to the senior center for whatever they want to use it for. There's no backing information with them. Mayor's Order 18, order that the city council accept the attached list of donations in the amount of $365 to the Chicopee Council on Aging. Said donations are for the senior program and are accepted in accordance with Mass General Law, Chapter 44, Section 53A. Again, it's uh, for the programs, Mayor's Order 19, order that the City Council accept the attached list of donations in the amount of $182 to the Chicopee Council on Aging. Said donations are for the River Mills Reminders Newsletter, and they are accepted in accordance with Mass General Law, Chapter 44, Section 53A. Again, that is for the reminder of their newsletter. Mayor's Order 20, order that the City Council accept a donation in the amount of $4,203.50 to the Chicopee Senior Center. Said donations are for the meals for the month of June, 20, June 2022, and they are accepted in accordance with Mass General Law, Chapter 44, Section 53A. And again, and that's for the meals. And I'll turn it back over to Mayor for a few more comments. Yes, thank you, President Laflamme. I just want to quickly go through some things that I think are very important for our community. And one of them is the state primary is going to be September 6th. It's coming that quickly. Your agenda contains a call for election from City Clerk Keith Rattel for September 6th, the state primary. Uh, as a reminder, the last day to register to vote in the primary is Saturday, August 27th. The register of voters will hold a special Saturday hours from 9 a.m. to 5 p.m on the 27th at City Hall to register voters. Mail-in ballots have been sent out to all voters who have requested a mail-in ballot. You can still request a mail-in ballot until August 29th at 5 p.m. The deadline for absentee ballots is also August 29th at 5 p.m. And in-person voting will, will be on Election Day, September 6th at the polling locations throughout the city. You can check your polling location online at the Massachusetts Secretary of State's office webpage or by contacting the Register of Voters office. And lastly, I'd like to say uh, that we appreciate the work of Representative Wagner and also Senator Eric Lesser for getting our home rule legislation petition passed and allowing Chicopee to have multiple voting precincts in Ward 6. So there was a redistricting that happened and uh, uh, again, I just want to thank our delegates for the hard work they do and also wanted to thank them for making sure that those precincts were available. Uh, I'd be remiss if I didn't take a moment to recognize how awesome National Night Out was last night here in the city of Chicopee. And for all those, the committee members, uh, Captain Cody, Lieutenant Katie Carball, uh, Rachel Boyer from my office, my communications director, and the other roughly 27 members of the National Night Out Committee did a tremendous job. I think it's, it was bigger and better than we've ever seen before. Uh, many smiles, many people having a, a wonderful time in building that relationship, that positive, not just police community relationship, but elected officials were there, the firefighters were there, emergency management team, Westover Air Force Reserve Base, the Sheriff's Department, all working with the neighborhood in building those positive relationships. It was really a fun event for all who attended, and I also want to thank the city councilors who also volunteered their time and members of the school committee who also did as well. I'd be remiss if I didn't take a quick moment to go through this list quickly, but there were many people that make it happen, and uh, many of those sponsors need to be recognized. So I'll go through them quickly. People's Bank, Westfield Bank, Florence Bank, the Chicopee Firefighters Loco, Dance Dynamics, Curry Honda, the Center of Martial Arts and Fitness, Mike Vito, Mary Beth Piniac Costello, Pride Gas Station, Bernardino's Bankery, Walmart, Chicopee Electric Light, Chicopee Housing Authority, Boys and Girls Club of Chicopee, Hamden County Sheriff's Department, Chicopee Police Department, Chicopee Fire Department, and a few other individual uh, contributors that made it possible. And uh, a lot of work goes into it, and, and for one night it, it was something special. So thank you for all involved, and if I missed anyone, I apologize, but thanks again, and we're already looking forward and, and uh, planning for 2023. So thank you for that. Uh, summer's winding down. I want to remind our students to complete their reading list, uh, summer assignments, 
and looking forward to a, a year of learning. The kids did not like hearing that at National Night Out when I mentioned that school is right around the corner. Uh, we had a, a few students complete their graduation requirements over the summer and obtain their diplomas. We're really proud of them. And a couple of just quick thoughts. I wanted to, to everyone to know that we went through a bunch of neighborhood meetings and what we found out to be one of the biggest problems in the city of Chicopee that needs to be addressed and something that we're working on is speeding. So as a public service announcement, frankly, telling people to please slow down. I don't know why everyone is in a rush. Please give yourself enough time to when you're going from point A to point B. Right now, we're piloting the speed tables on Front Street to see how effective they're going to be and how they impact our first responders. Again, it's a pilot project, and people seem very excited about it. It isn't completed yet. It's substantially completed. You'll see much more uh, paintings being put down to make it very clear that there are speed tables as you approach them, but I'm already receiving requests to put them all over the city. So we're piloting it right now, and I can tell you that this is a warning. The Traffic Bureau is out in full force. If you are speeding, we will pull you over and give you a citation. And I, the Chief and I have talked about this today, and uh, we have overtime available from a grant, and we're going to be using that overtime through the month of August. So here's a warning, please slow down. When you speed, you are not only putting yourself in harm's way, but you're also putting others in harm's way, and it's simply not acceptable. And the other thing is distracted driving. Using your phone while driving is illegal and you will get cited for it. So please put your phones down when you're driving your vehicles. It's um, unfortunate that I feel like I have to make public service announcements, but um, I feel in, that it's necessary. Uh, two people lost their lives, it's no secret, it's very sad. So condolences to the Martinez family. I can't even imagine what you're going through. Uh, lastly, Movie night at Zot Park, I, I just want to take an opportunity to mention it's Saturday, August 13th at 8.30. The park opens at 6.30. There'll be free popcorn and water. The movie is called Paw Patrol. It looks really cool and hope to see you there. And please don't forget about the concert series at Aldenville Park. It runs on Tuesday nights. It started at 6.30 tonight. There's also uh, one on the 9th and the 16th. So take advantage of that. City councilors, thank you. Uh, for letting me go through this quick list and have a great meeting and thank you for consideration to the mayor's orders and enjoy your summer. Thank you, we're gonna take a five minute recess.
Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. I would like to call to order the August 2nd, 2022 City Council meeting to order. Please rise for the pledge to the flag. And now a moment of silence for all those that protect us home and abroad. Thank you. Let me see, is she here tonight? Yes, I'd like to welcome uh, School Department Liaison Sandra Perret tonight for being here, thank you. Clerk Patel, could you please call the roll? President Laflamme. Here. Roy? Yes, here. Tillotson? Here. Zagorowski? McAuliffe? Here. Brooks? Brooks? Jane? Lopez? Balkir? Here. Krampitz? Here. Obis? Here. Cushane? Here. Labrie? Here. Penny Costello? Here. Twelve present. Contra Brooks, are you on? <laughs> okay, he muted. Okay. In compliance with the open meeting law, the city of Chicopee is broadcasting live and for future broadcast this meeting on Chicopee TV. Is anyone else in the audience video or audio taping this meeting? Please state your name and the reason why you're doing so. Thank you. We will, we will now move into public input. Public input is limited to three minutes or less. There will be no discussion of collective bargaining or personal attacks. Is anyone in the audience for public input? You can come, anybody can, just come to the mic up there, just state your name, and you have three minutes. Mrs. Aslan, you're first. My name is Marie Aslin. Um, thank you very much for giving me the opportunity to speak this evening. Um, my husband David and I have lived at 147 Dean Street for uh, 32, 30, 32, 33 years, and I've lived in Chicopee well beyond that, but I'm not going to tell you how long. <laughs> Um, the reason why I'm here is I would like to speak this evening about the recently installed one-way sign on the corner of Britain Street and Old Lyman Road. I spoke at the recent ordinance committee meeting about this public safety hazard that was ignored for more than 30 plus years. I explained that prior to this one-way sign, our neighborhood was nothing more than a cut through that became a speeding race track used by many. So people would come up Old Lyman Road, they would accelerate, they would come down the street as it curves, there's my house, Dean Street, and then they would take a left and go down the Riviera Drive. The speed that came through there was horrific and it was constant. I had my father-in-law put a boulder in my garden for fear somebody would run into my pool. People have actually driven into the, my rock wall, into my garden, knocked my mailbox down. So I said to my husband, what's next? My porch. That's how fast that the speed came through. I want to publicly thank our newly elected councilwoman, Mary Beth Peniak. Costello, who wasted no time after being elected to act on a neighborhood's safety hazard in Ward 9. Mary Beth carefully studied this traffic problem and actually sat in her car counting traffic at many different times of the day. She quickly identified that Old Lyman Road was being used as a shortcut to avoid lights on Memorial Drive. Vehicles were not stopping at stop signs, and they were speeding through our highly populated residential neighborhood. Mary Beth also sought the review and advice from the professional engineers from our DPW, which I am extremely grateful for. 30 seconds. 
Ooh, am I going? Oh, I'll speak yeah, faster. Sorry. I was informed that Old Lyman Road was only 16 feet wide and that all two-way streets must be a minimum of 22 wide, declaring the road itself unsafe for two-way traffic. Today, I can describe our neighborhood as peaceful. The traffic count has been reduced by 80 to 90 percent. After more than 30 years, our neighborhood streets are finally safe and pedestrians, joggers, and most of all children of the neighborhood are safe. To think that a one-way sign redirecting the cut-through traffic away from a highly populated residential area would be such a quick and perfect resolution. Utilizing established engineering practices has transformed this dangerous area into a safe and peaceful neighborhood. Thank you. I'm done. Thank you very much. Thank you. Uh, Lisa Bienvenue, 34 Everett Street, Ward 9. Um, it seems like traffic, speeding, traffic volume, traffic patterns is the topic of 2022 in Chicopee. Um, the mayor was speaking about it tonight with the speeding. And even with all this attention, it feels there needs to be more discussion and focused planning and development. The fatality on Friday at the base of Memorial Drive is the most recent of the serious accidents and or fatalities that have occurred on the drive over the past 50 years. In July 1971, former aldermanic president Thomas Vertek was killed on Memorial Drive exiting the Mass Pike. And I believe that was before the North-South Highway was divided and might have been the reason why they made it into a divided highway. So there's a long history of problems with speeding on the drive. Traffic volume, speeding, road design aren't just buzzwords. These are real concerns, not only with the people of Chicopee, but also Mass DOT and US DOT. At the meetings where the Burnett Road truck stop or the Old Lyman One Way have been discussed, a lot of emphasis has been placed on counting cars, ease of moving traffic, convenience, et cetera. In the case of Burnett Road, I haven't heard anyone asking what the primary purpose of the road design for the entrance to the truck stop is. Is it to keep traffic moving or is it safety? It can be both, but it doesn't have to be both. Some roads are designed to move traffic and some are for safety. Some are for both. Do you really know what that design is for? Because all anybody was talking about is how many trucks they can get through the intersection there and not back up road. In, to the citizens of Ward 6, the safety is the prime concern, which is what they were vo voicing, but I felt like it fell on deaf ears. I feel that all of this should be looked at when you're thinking about pilot when you're thinking about anything that's happening in this city. You want, you want to call it the gateway city, the crossroads of New England. So it has to, you have to think about what you're planning and developing for. 30 in, seconds. In 2014, there was a study that was done on the revitalization of, of um, Memorial Drive, and it talked about more than just speeding. Speeding is a wonderful thing to target, but think about the road designs that you're doing, the permits that you're giving out, the layouts of everything. It's about the planning. It's about the full vision of what you're looking to do for this city. Thank you. Anyone else for public input? Go ahead, sir. I guess I'm going to piggyback on that old Lyman Road. Uh, it goes back a couple of years ago. There was a couple of buses. Name and address, please, first. Oh, David Bennett, 94 St. Jacques Avenue, Chicopee. Thank you. Uh, yeah, in regards to old Lyman Road, there were a couple of, uh, there was an incident with a couple of buses. Um, one was coming down, one was going up, and obviously the road's not wide enough, so they kind of like colliding with the mirrors locking together. Uh, the only reason I remember this was because I was at my son's house, who was on the corner of Lyman, Old Lyman and Britain Street. Uh, got the kids on the bus, but uh, once those buses uh, locked with their, with their mirrors, um, nobody on, nobody off, 
uh, until the school department got there and uh, I believe the principal or the vice principal of Bowie School. Um, they had a, somebody from the bus company, uh, police department responded, but uh, it was all because of the road not being wide enough uh, for the two buses. That's all I have to say. Thank you. Thank you. Anyone else for public input? Is anyone on Zoom for public input? Go ahead, ma'am. You can bring the mic down, loosen it up. Thank you. Hi, I'm Jane Alexander, 25 Thomas Street. We've met before a few times. I've been not here for the last meeting um, on the follow-up for the sign that I've requested over two years now. But I'm also here today because I'm very concerned. I'm so glad to hear that the police chief is gonna be putting C3s down. I don't know the whole project. I haven't been part of it, but I'm definitely gonna get the information. My point is my street's becoming a race road. It's, it's, it hasn't been stopped and it cannot be stopped. And it gets retaliation on if we speak up. We go to the police, it makes no sense. We're being retaliated on. We speak on behalf of our neighbors, we get retaliated on. And then they all claim that they don't know these ordinance. So I have requested, I have sent emails to Mr. Crochet, Ward 7. Um, I don't get any response besides, oh, Mr. Laflamme said he'll um, put your thing up for the meeting. I'm yes. still weeks. I haven't been too well but this is every day. And all I can do is call the police, but then I have to worry about the retaliation. And it's become not peaceful to live in my home anymore. My neighbors don't even, we look like we're all in isolation. None of the children come back out. What are we asking? We're just asking for a little bit of help and these ordinances get followed through. We're asking that we don't want a, a racetrack now in front of our home. We don't want none of it. You guys know who it is. You guys know what's going on. We need support, because I can't do it by myself. All I've asked you guys, and I know you guys have been somewhat pleasant to help me out, Mr. Jim, Mr. Lefem, I appreciate it. But we can't go months without, I haven't seen the police barely since this last time I was at the meeting. And then I had Mr. Nagarelli stop in my home and we just think it's baffling that none of the ordinance can be followed through, that nothing can be done. Sure, if it was done in my home and it was in front of your home, you guys probably would not tolerate it. We just don't know who to go to. But I'm coming to you guys once again. Not only do I need that sign as soon as you guys can, but you guys also have to stop the scum. Get them off the street. Our kids want to come outside and play and not worry about being unsafe. I can only talk as much as I can. All I'm asking you guys, you guys have more power. I don't know how much longer I'll be here, but I'm counting on you guys to get it done because my kids have more, more time and they're gonna be voters and they're gonna definitely know that what I stood up for means a lot. It's our street and we wanna live safe and we wanna be able to come outside every summer in the winter. Now we have to ask it. All I'm asking is please to help. Thank you, gentlemen and ladies. Just so you know, your order is on the agenda tonight. Thank you. Appreciate Thank it. You. Thank you. Is there anyone else for public input? Seeing none, I'll take. Oh, go ahead. Thank you. The name and address, please. Joe Brady, Old Lyman Road. Okay. The Old Lyman Road issue, we have a professional engineer that the city pays to make decisions in our engineering department. She has stated to us that we do not meet the federal highway standard for two-way traffic at the beginning of Old Lyman Road. It's a safety issue. Someone is going to get hurt there. As it is now, we've got people, you know, screaming at the people that live there about the one way. They drive by and tell them where to stick their one way. 
and they're going the wrong way. And, you know, what do we pay our engineer for? If she's not there to tell us what's right and what's wrong, we might as well say the same thing to the two chiefs sitting right here. We should tell them how to run their department. I'm not an engineer, I can't tell you that. I'm not a cop, and I'm not a fireman, and I appreciate everyone that is. But making it back to a two-way street is not gonna do anything more than cause a problem. I don't wanna be the one responsible for that. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for your input. Anyone else for public input? Senior, I'll take a motion to, to go back to regular order of business. So moved. Motion made and second to go to regular order of business. Uh, Clerk Rattel, any minutes? Yes, <clears throat> June 30th and July 5th. Council McAuliffe. Motion that the minutes for June 30th and July 10th be approved this evening. Fifth. July 5th. Motion July made 5th. and second that we accept the minutes of June 30th and July 5th. On the motion? Self-explanatory. Thank you. Any other comments? Seeing none, all in favor? Opposed? And the motion passes. Mayor's orders. <clears throat> or that the sum of $284.65 be in hereby appropriate to the following named account, assessor's expense account for travel. Set amounts be taken from the available funds in the stabilization. Councilor Brooks. Motion made and seconded the mayor's order be received and passed through all stages on a written recommendation of the mayor. Motion made and seconded that the order received be received and passed through all stages on a written recommendation of the mayor on the motion. On the motion, this is just uh, some available funds that need to be taken to clear up a small amount uh, in the travel account that wasn't able to be budgeted for. Thank you. Any other comments? Roll call, please. President Laflamme. Yes. Roy. Yes. Billitson? Yes. Zagorowski? Yes. McAuliffe? Yes. Brooks? Yes. Lopez? Yes. Falkir? Yes. Krampitz? Yes. Sobis? Yes. Cushane? Yes. Bree? Yes. Piniac Costello? Yes. 13, yes. And a motion passes. Or that the sum of $270 be in hereby appropriate to the following named account, police expense account for substance of, substance of persons. Santa amounts be taken from the available funds in the stabilization fund. Concha Lopez. Motion that the mayor's order be received and passed through all stages on the written recommendation of the mayor. Motion made and second that the motion be received and passed through all stages on the written recommendation of the mayor. On the motion. On the motion, this is just missed reimbursements that were not filed before the end of the fiscal year for training lunch expenses on behalf of officers. Thank you. Any other comments? Seeing none, roll call. President Laflamme. Yes. Roy. Yes. Tillotson. Yes. Zagorowski. Yes. McCullough. Yes. Brooks. Yes. Lopez. Yes. Valkyr. Yes. Krampitz. Yes. Sobis. Yes. Cushane. Yes. Fabri. Yes. Piniac Costello. Yes. 13 yes. And the motion passes. Or that the sum of $655.77 being hereby appropriate to the following named account, police expense account for rental of equipment. Set amounts be taken from the available funds in the stabilization fund. Councilor Cushane. Motion made and second that the motion be received and passed through all stages on a written recommendation of the mayor on the motion. This is for a copy machine rental. Thank you. Any other comments? Seeing none, roll call. President Laflamme. Yes. Roy. Yes. Tillotson. Yes. Zagorowski. Yes. McAuliffe. Yes. Brooks. Yes. Lopez. Yes. Falkir. Yes. Krampitz. Yes. Sobis. Yes. Cushane. Yes. Labrie. Yes. Piniac Costello. Yes. 13 yes. And the motion passes. Or that the sum of $1,000 being hereby appropriate to the following named account, building salary account for out of rank. Set amounts be taken from the available funds in the stabilization fund. Councilor Zagorowski. Motion that the mayor's order be received and passed through all stages on the written recommendation of the mayor. Motion made and second that the motion be received and passed through all stages on the written recommendation of the mayor. On the motion. On the motion. This is for uh, $1,000 for out of, rank, out of rank expenses due to the shortage a part-time clerk had to do work to cover the hours and the work that needs to be done. Thank you. Any other comments? Seeing none, roll call, please. President Laflamme. Yes. Roy. Yes. Billiton. Yes. Gorowski. Yes. McCullough. Yes. Brooks. Yes. Lopez. Yes. Falkir. Yes. Krampitz. Yes. Sobis. Yes. Cushane. Yes. Bree. Yes. Piniac Costello. Yes. 13 yes. And a motion passes. 
Ordered that the sum of $34,800 be in hereby appropriate to the following named account, police special account for purchase of bulletproof vests. Set amounts be taken from the available funds in the stabilization fund. Contra Balakir. Motion at the mayor's order be received and passed through all stages on the written recommendation of the mayor. On motion made in second that the motion be received and passed through all stages on the written recommendation of the mayor on the motion. Uh, on a motion, this is for a purchase of uh, 29 bulletproof vests for our officers. And um, the replacement vests, they, they had to be replaced because they've reached their expiration of five years. And what's good is um, there's a couple of grants involved here. Uh, the city was approved for a grant from the DOJ to reimburse uh, the department for half. And uh, the state's portion should cover the rest as long as uh, we get the state funding. And this is uh, well needed for officers. Thank you. Thank you. Any other comments? Councilor Lopez. I just want to commend the uh, city's police department for going after grants. Um, I think it's really important that folks do go after grants, and it's not something that all department heads do. So thank you for that, because this does offset the cost that our residents have to pay for equipment that is very much needed, and we would have given you the money for anyways, but it's also great to not use tax dollars on it. So thank you. Thank you. Any other comments? Seeing none, roll call. President LaFlam? Yes. Roy? Yes. Billiton? Yes. Zagorowski? Yes. McAuliffe? Yes. Brooks? Yes. Lopez? Yes. Falkir? Yes. Krampitz? Yes. Dobis? Yes. Cushane? Yes. Bree? Yes. Pinia Costello? Yes. 13, yes. And the motion passes. Or that the sum of $324,507.06 be in hereby appropriate to the following named account Police Special Account for Purchase of Cruisers. Set amounts be taken from the available funds in the Stabilization Fund for Capital Budgeting. Councilor Tillotson. Motion that the mayor's order be received past roll stages upon a written recommendation of the mayor. Motion made and seconded that the motion be received and passed through all stages on a written recommendation of the mayor on the motion. And the motion, uh, I, I, I hope that we have passed this this evening. Uh, some of this money is from, this, from the federal government uh, that we need to put into something that's going to last a while. And uh, these cruisers will come in handy. Uh, we need them. Some of them are are parked out there, but they're waiting for parts and other issues. So uh, hopefully uh, these new cruisers will put us ahead of the game for a while and we try to keep up and that's the purpose of this order. Thank, Thank you, you very much. Anybody else? Any other comments? Anybody on Zoom? Councilor Lopez. Um, and as was, it was mentioned during the mayor's briefing, um, once again, this is the police department being ahead of the game and making sure that we have these earmarked. So this funding will be expensed and uh, not to the luck of other department heads who have had to wait a very long time for vehicles. The police is lucky enough that it's been earmarked and we'll be able to get those uh, as soon as they're able to be furnished with equipment. So once again, commend you on being able to get those earmarked. Thank you very much. Any other comments? Seeing none, roll call, please. President LaFlam. Yes. Roy. Yes. Billiton. Yes. Zagorowski? Yes. McAuliffe? Yes. Brooks? Yes. Lopez? Yes. Falkir? Yes. Krampitz? Yes. Obis? Yes. Cushane? Yes. Bree? Yes. Finian Costello? Yes. 13, yes. And the motion passes. Or that the sum of $64,600 be a nearby appropriate to the following named account, fire special account for improvements to Station 8. Set amounts be taken from the available funds in the Stabilization Fund for Capital Budgeting. Councilor Bree. Yes, motion that the mayor's order be received and passed through all stages on the written recommendation of the mayor. Motion made and seconded that the motion be received and passed through all stages on the written recommendation of the mayor on the motion. Yeah, this is a uh, for a rebuild of um, station eight uh, floor. Uh, it was built in 2003. Uh, it has some ruts in it. It's causing some tripping hazards. Uh, it needs to be fixed before somebody gets hurt. Uh, so I recommend this uh, pass this evening. Thank you. Any other comments? Councilor Costello. Thank you to the fire chief for keeping up the fire station, uh, especially on James Street. Um, the pictures really tell you a thousand words that you really need to, um, a, we as a, a board need to make sure that this funding exists because this is a, a priority in regards to preventing accidents and injury. Thank you, Chief. Thank you. Any other comments? Anybody on Zoom? Seeing none, roll call. President LaFlam. Yes. Roy? Yes. Blitzen? Yes. Zagorowski? Yes. McAuliffe? Yes. Brooks? Yes. Lopez? Yes. Valkyr? Yes. Krampitz? Yes. Sobis? Yes. Cushane? Yes. Bree? Yes. Finia Costello? 
Yes. 13 yes. And a motion passes. Or that the sum of $350,000 be in hereby appropriate to the following named account, fire special account for purchase of an ambulance. Set amounts be taken from the available funds in the stabilization fund for capital budgeting. Councilor Roy. Yeah, motion that the mayor's order be received and passed through all stages on a written recommendation of the mayor. Motion made and second that the motion be received and passed through all stages on a written recommendation of the mayor. On the motion. Yes, the fire department's policy is to replace first line ambulances after they've reached 80,000 miles. Uh, they are then placed in a backup or reserve status, ensuring that we always have a reliable ambulance available. Our emergency medical service vehicles respond to approximately 8,000 calls a year. It is essential we, we, we maintain a fleet of late model vehicles to ensure reliable service. Our current fleet of ambulances includes a 2019 with 33,000 miles, a 2015 with 84,000, a 2016 with 119,000, and we've got a 2016 with 113,000. We currently have an ambulance in order in which we hope to be delivered by the end of 2022 or early 2023, according to our chief, at an estimated cost of $350,000. Thank you. Thank you. Any other comments? Anybody on Zoom? Seeing none, roll call, please. President LaFlam. Yes. Roy? Yes. Tillotson? Yes. Zagorowski? Yes. McCullough? Yes. Brooks? Yes. Lopez? Yes. Falkir? Yes. Krampitz? Yes. Dobis? Yes. Cushane? Yes. Fabri? Yes. Finian Costello? Yes. 13 yes. And the motion passes. Or that the sum of $313,341 be in hereby appropriate to the following named account, fire special account for improvements to Station 5. Set amounts be taken from the available funds in the Stabilization Fund for Capital Budgeting. Councilor Krampitz. Motion that the mayor's order be received and passed through all stages on the written recommendation of the mayor. Motion made and second that the motion be received and passed. Oh, with the amendment. Okay, motion made and second that the motion be received and passed through all stages on a written recommendation of the mayor with the amendment. On the motion. Yes, this is uh, for uh, Station 5 to do uh, improvements. Essentially, they're uh, taking up uh, the, the driveway uh, and they're removing an underground tank. Uh, and uh, going to, you know, since they're redoing the driveway, going to take that out at the same time and dispose of it. And then um, once the driveway is completed, uh, put a above ground tank in its place. All right, thank you. Uh, just for clarification, um, Mike, what's the amendment? Oh, yeah. Yeah. He mentioned in the mayor's right, it goes up Motion to amend uh, the dollar figure. Goes Got up $100,000. 413341 dollars Three thirteen goes to four thirteen. Goes up hundred thousand. Yeah, three forty-one. Yeah. He did that. Mike, the mayor asked for that amendment. He did. He put it on. and He asked yes. for it. It's, it's, it's okay, letter. you got it. Okay, can yeah. we have the letter? I don't have my letter here. Just for the clerk can have it. Here you go. Yeah, I'll definitely need that for the. Okay, thank you. We're all set. He's got one. Thank you. No, he'll take that. We, I already amended it, but he just needs to know why. Got it. Thank you. Thank you, Mike. On the motion, uh, you want to continue or are you all set? I'm all set. Thanks. Okay. Anybody else? Any other comments? Councilor Lopez. Um, I just want to commend Chief Samborski for ensuring that, you know, we took care of this lot while we already dug up a quarter of it. I think that's really good use of uh, city funding because the lot needed to be done anyway. So this is a good time to take care of both things. So good job on having great foresight. Thank you for, for what you do for the city. Thank you. Anybody on Zoom? Councilor McAuliffe. Just a point of order inquiry. Don't we have to take a roll call vote on the amendment first before the, the, we actually vote on the final order? Yes, you have to take a roll call vote on the request, request an amendment by the mayor. Yeah. We can't okay. do it unless it's requested by the mayor. So the clerk's got to read that in, though, first, right? So he wasn't okay. Made to amend the mayor's order as requested to 314,000. Was it total? So someone has to make that motion, right? The city clerk's going to read it, make a motion. Well, somebody's got to make the motion. So moved. Okay, Someone's got to make the motion, right, Dan? Right. So I'm going to make a motion to amend this order to reflect a dollar figure of 413341 uh, and zero cents, okay. yep. as thank requested by the mayor. Thank you. Roll call, please. President LaFleur. Yes. Roy? 
Yes. Tillotson? Yes. Zagorowski? Yes. McAuliffe? Yes. Brooks? Yes. Lopez? Valkyr? Yes. Krampitz? Yes. Dobis? Yes. Cushane? Yes. Labrie? Yes. Piniac Costello? Yes. 13 yes on the amendment. And the amendment passes. On the order. On the order. Roll call. You want to redo the, the order? Request to the mayor. Yeah, we got Motion. Uh, is there anyone on the floor that wants to talk about it anymore? Seeing none, roll call please on the order now. As amended. As amended. President Laflamme. Yes. Roy. Yes. Ellison. Yes. Zagorowski. Yes. McAuliffe. Yes. Brooks. Yes. Lopez. Yes. Valkyr. Yes. Krampitz. Yes. Dobis. Yes. Duchesne. Yes. Abri. Yes. Finia Costello. Yes. 13 yes. And the motion passes. Or that the city council accept a donation in the amount of $100 from Councilwoman Mary Beth Piniac Costello to the Chicopee Council on Aging. Said donation is for the Senior Safety Lunch and Learn event held July 14, 2022, and is accepted in accordance with Mass General Law Chapter 44, Section 53A. Bob? Uh, motion made and seconded. Uh, Councilman and Mary Beth? Yes, this was the safety luncheon. The, uh, the SALT Council sponsored it along with the Council on Aging. There was and no motion that the mayor's order be received and passed through all stages of the oh. record and the mayor. <laughs> I thought Bob did it, thanks. Oh, I'm sorry, Bob, you gotta read it. Oh, okay, motion, motion made. made. Second that the motion be received, passed through all stages on the written recommendation of the mayor, Mary Beth. Yes, um, again, this is from the Safety Council at the SALT Council luncheon for July 14th. I don't know, uh, this is just basically a donation for the luncheon on that date that the police department and fire department were a part of. Can, okay, thank, thank you. you. Oh, Bob, all set. All in favor? I think we have to call the roll. You have to call the roll. Have to call the roll on this yes. one. Yes. Yep. Roll call, please. President LaFlam. Abstain. Roy. Yes. Splitson. Yes. Zagorowski. Yes. McAuliffe. Yes. Brooks. Yes. Lopez. Yes. Falkir. Yes. Trampets. Yes. Sobis. Yes. Cushane. Councillor Cushane. Yes. Please speak up. Labrie. Yes. Pinia Costello. Yes. I, I, does she have to abstain? Because it's hers. What's that? Approved. Does she have to abstain? Because it's her donation. Help? Does she have her own? Mayor Beth, you want to re abstain for that? I'll abstain. Thank you, Councilor okay. Lopez. Okay, we'll put it that way. 11 yes, two abstentions. Thank you. Or that the sum of $317,603 be in hereby appropriate to the following named account, DBW Sanitation Special Account for purchase of a side loader. Set amounts be taken from the available funds in the sanitation revolving account for waste zero reduction yellow bags. Councilor McAuliffe. Motion that the mayor's order be received and passed through all stages on his written recommendation. Motion made and second that the motion be received and passed through all stages on the written recommendation and the motion. This, uh, this is uh, additional funding from the Food Bank of Western Mass to complement a grant that the city has received to improve infrastructure um, as part of the Mass Works uh, infrastructure grant that will help um, the, the infrastructure with regards to the new food bank property be updated. It assures that um, no municipal tax dollars are spent with regards to that. Thank you. Thank you. Any other comments? Any? I think you read the wrong one. Yeah, uh, uh, President, you skipped 11. We missed 11. Yeah, that's what I screwed up somewhere. Yeah. I'm not sure if I did or if. No, you, yeah, you did. skipped 11. I'm I'll sorry. Take, I'll Joel, take can you do 11? You skipped I, I'd be it. happy to do 11. Thank you. Uh, this is for uh, the uh, side loader for, um, for the yellow bag. So uh, they're going to put that on order because it's going to take some time. Thank you. Any other comments on the number 11? Seeing none, roll call. President LaFlam. Yes. Roy. Yes. Splitson. Yes. Zagorowski. Yes. McAuliffe. Yes. Brooks. Yes. Lopez. Yes. Valkyr. Yes. Krampitz. Yes. Dobis. Yes. Cushane. Yes. Labrie. Yes. Piniac Costello. Yes. 13 yes. And a motion passes. Or that the city council accept a donation in the amount of $199,900 from the Food Bank of Western Massachusetts to the city of Chicopee. Said donation will be used to cover the difference between the available grant fund for the Food Bank infrastructure project and the lowest qualified bid, and the funds are accepted in accordance with Mass General Law Chapter 44, Section 53A. 
Councillor Delbaz. Motion that the mayor's order is received and passed through all stages and the written recommendation of the mayor and the donation is received this evening. Motion made and second that the motion be received and passed through all stages on the written recommendation of the mayor and the donate the a be accepted this evening on the motion. Uh, on the motion as, as uh, my colleague already kind of went over it. This is the uh, the difference in uh, what the city has to pay uh, for the uh, infrastructure for the, the new food bank. Uh, there's uh, some additional expense. So the food bank is offering the city that, you know, the additional money. So there's no cost to the uh, taxpayer. Thank you. Any other comments? Anybody on Zoom? Seeing none, roll call. President Laflamme. Yes. Roy? Yes. Blitzen? Yes. Zagorowski? Yes. McAuliffe? Yes. Brooks? Yes. Lopez? Yes. Valkyr? Yes. Krampitz? Yes. Dobis? Yes. Cushain? Yes. Labrie? Yes. Finiac Costello? Yes. 13 yes. And a motion passes. Be it ordered by, by the City Council hereby amend code section 77-1A personnel by deleting 17 sergeants and inserting 19 sergeants and deleting and special officers as may from time to time be appointed. Councilor uh, Brooks. Thank you. Motion that the mayor's order is received and passed through all stages on the written recommendation of the mayor. Got to be an ordinance. Okay, we can put that in a minute, Jen. Motion made and second that the order be motion received and referred to the ordinance committee for a public hearing. Okay, motion made and second that the motion be received and passed through all stages on a written recommendation of the mayor and sent to the ordinance committee for its first reading. Um, Shane, on the motion. On the motion, on the, motion uh, the chief laid out, chief major laid out a clear reason as to why, specifically meeting with his uh, supervisory staff to evaluate the sergeant rank position and indicated a need to increase to 19. This will allow them to return one of the sergeants who had been serving uh, on the street in a different capacity back to IT and also uh, really implement fully the C3 program at Chickabee Center, or rather the uh, Willamance section of the city replicating the program at Chickabee Center. Uh, this will allow him to do that uh, contained within his complement and I think he highlighted during the mayor's order session uh, the importance of this and the benefit to the city not only to that specific area but overall uh, to the policing of the city of Chicopee. Thank you. Any other comments? If it's a little board I'd like to just make a, a comment for a minute. If it, all in favor? Oppose. Oh, thank you. I want to thank the ch uh, chief, uh, uh, chief majors, myself. Um, I think this is a great idea, especially as I mentioned in the mayor's briefing. The IT program is is critical to today's policing, and I think uh, putting a sergeant in charge of that unit. Um, full time and not having to move them out when they're um, slow or, or uh, short staffed. Um, this is important because IT is, is critical. So thank you chief for all you do and the reorganization of your police department. Councilor Zigorowski. Yeah, I, I, I support this wholeheartedly. One of the good things about it is by uh, elevating a couple of patrolmen to sergeants, it leaves two more openings that the chief is able to fill and probably return to walking beats downtown thank you any other comments yeah, through the, to the chair yep. to the attorney hold on go ahead uh, <clears throat> where it says be it ordered uh, it should be be it ordained it should read be it ordained can we, can, in, can we make that change in, in committee? committee we can do that in committee you can do it in committee okay all right thank you that won't that way it get, won't get held up yep. okay. sure thank you all roll right. call please okay just going to committee yep you want to roll call for that Oh, all in favor? Opposed? The motion passes. Next, we have the Chapter 7 Ordinance Revisions. Council Lopez. Great. Um, are, we, are we taking this one and the other one? Or no, just, just this okay. one. They're different. Okay. Motion that the mayor's order be received and passed through all stages on the re recommendation of the mayor. Motion made and second that the motion be received and passed through all stages on the written mayor on the motion. On the motion, this is... Um, some revisions to some of the salaries that were increased. Um, specifically, this revision includes an increase to the pay for city councilors of $2,000 effective January 2024, and an increase of $1,500 for school committee members effective January 2024. Uh, very important to note that this would not be in effect for the councilors during this term, as we are not able to give ourselves a raise, um, and also would not be 
Are, am I, yeah. are you trying to stop me? Oh, okay. Um, it also would not be in effect for school committee members during this term as we're not giving a raise to any incumbent elected school committee members or city councilors. Uh, this is a recommendation from the mayor as uh, the councilors and the school committee members have not received a raise in uh, quite a long time. So he's recommending uh, this raise to be in effect for the next period of election. Thank you. Can you send it to ordinance for its first reading? Oh, sure. Uh, send it to ordinance for the first reading. Thank you. Motion made and second. Second to motion to ordinance first reading. Thank you. Yeah. Anyone, uh, anyone else? Any other comments? Seeing none, roll call. Just call the committee. Oh, motion to all in favor? Aye. Opposed? The motion passes. To the new appointment of Brother Vincent Vivian as a member of the Commission on Disability. Councilor Cushane. Motion that they receive and sent to Human Resources Committee for its first reading. Okay. Motion made and second that the motion be received and sent to the Human Resources Committee for a public hearing on the motion. Um, which is the standard procedure. We'll take it up in committee. Any other comments? All in favor? Opposed? The motion passes. We have a new appointment of Katharina Pires uh, as a member of the Ambulance Commission. Councilor Zierowski. Motion that the uh, appointment go to our Human Resource Committee. Motion made and second that the order be received and sent to the Human Resources Committee for a public hearing on the motion. Just a um, point of information, if I may. She, yep. The lady was here. She, she seems to be eminently qualified. I Jim, mean, we're going to send it to. Do, uh, do we want to make an exception and allow her to go no. forward? No. We, we, we are clear about that. Always made exceptions in the Okay, past. you want to take a vote, Jim? People, let's take a vote. Who wants to send her to the. HR committee. Well, okay, fine. I think we got, we got to get it. I thought we were. Hey, I, we're we've we're made that very fine. clear. Yes. Uh, can I make a comment on the motion? before? Yep. Okay. Thank you. Um, I'm I'm glad. Even though I support Katie, and I think Katie is a phenomenal resident. She's one of my War Three residents. Very involved. I do also support that we continue to send everyone to Human Resources Committee when they have not been appointed just yet, uh, for all the reasons that we have discussed at previous meetings. Um, and although I firmly support Katie, I do not believe in making those kind of exceptions because the rule was put into place for a reason. So, Katie, thank you for your willingness to serve on the Ambulance Commission and for your willingness to go before the Human Resources Committee because you understand that part of volunteering is also transparency. Uh, I appreciate all of your experience that you're bringing to the Commission. Um, I have no doubt that we all will be able to see that during the Human Resources Committee. So, thank you for your willingness to serve. Thank you. Any other comments? All in favor? Aye. To send it to HR. Thank you. Opposed, and the motion passes. Order that the City Council accept the MARTAP Helping Hand Mini Grant in the amount of $1,000 from the Mass DOT Rail and Transit Division to the Chigabee Council on Aging. Said grant is accepted in accordance with Mass General Law, Chapter 44, Section 53A. Motion made and second that the motion be received and passed through all stages on the written recommendation of the Mayor. Councilman Bellicare. Okay. You need um, somebody to make the motion. Who, who made oh. the motion? Who made the motion? I made the motion. As acting president, you need somebody to make the motion to you, and then you second the motion. Okay. So we need okay. somebody to make the motion. I will make the motion. Mo motion that the mayor's order be received and passed through all stages on a written recommendation to the mayor and that the grant be accepted this evening. Right. And then you second. I second. Mayor, uh, I second the motion. Yep. Okay. I'm back to George. Go all right. George. Okay. Um, the Chickpea Council on Aging has received the... Uh, Martrap Helping Hand Mini Grant in the amount of $1,000. And this is uh, from the Mass DOT Rail. And it's my understanding that uh, the Council on Aging can take this grant and use it for whatever they want, So, but it'll be helpful. $1,000 helps. So I, I support the motion. Thank you. Any other comments? Any comments? Do you need a roll call on this? Yes. 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 Roll call. Yes. President Laflamme. Yes. Oh, abstain. Roy. Sorry. Yes. Billiton. Yes. Zagorowski. <coughs> yes. McCullough. Yes. Brooks. Yes. Lopez. Yes. Balkir. Yes. Krampitz. Yes. Dobis. Yes. Cushane. Yes. Cabri. Yes. Piniac Costello. Yes. 12 yes, one abstention. Motion passes. Ordered that the City Council accept the attached list of donations in the amount of $365 to the Chicopee Council on Aging. Said donations are for senior programming and are accepted in accordance with Mass General Law, Chapter 44, Section 53A. Motion made and seconded. 
Councilor Tillotson. Make a motion. Councilman uh, Jim, want to make a motion? Jim, Jim Tillotson. Yeah, motion that the mayor's order be received and passed through all stages upon a written recommendation of the mayor. On the motion. Motion seconded. Motion seconded. Well, Jim, was, what's second. Call? No, you have yeah. to say motion seconded. Second motion. Okay, on the motion, Jim. Motion uh, that uh, it be approved. Any other comments? President Laflam? Abstain. Roy? Yes. Billiton? <coughs> yes. Zagorowski? Yes. McCulloch? Yes. Brooks? Yes. Lopez? Yes. Valkyr? Yes. Krampitz? Yes. Dobis? Yes. Cushane? Yes. Bree? Yes. Piniac Costello? Yes. 12 yes, one abstention. Motion passes. Order that the City Council accept the attached list of donations in the amount of $182 to the Chigabee Council on Aging. Said donations are for the River Mills Reminder Newsletter and are accepted in accordance with Mass General Law Chapter 44, Section 53A. Motion made and seconded. No, Motion. you can't. You have to sign it. Motion that the uh, mayor's order be received and re, uh, the donations received uh, and accepted this evening. Second. On the motion. No, second it. So on a motion, self-explanatory. Okay. Roll call. President Laflamme. Abstain. Roy. Yes. Billiton. <coughs> yes. Zagorowski. Yes. McCulloch. Yes. Brooks. Yes. Lopez. Yes. Valkyr. Yes. Krampitz. Yes. Dobis. Yes. Cushane. Yes. Bree. Yes. Pina Costello. Yes. Twelve yes, one abstention. Motion passes. Or that the City Council accept the donation in the amount of $4,203.50 to the Chigabee Senior Center. Said donations are accepted for senior meals for the month of June 2022 and are accepted in accordance with Mass General Law Chapter 44, Section 53A. How about motion. Fred? Fred. Fred, you want to make a motion? Passage? Uh, sure. Motion that the uh, mayor's order be accepted and passed for all stages on the recommendation of the mayor and the donation accepted tonight. Motion made and seconded. I thought this was going to go to Jerry Roy. Nope. Any other, anything else to add? Nope. Uh, Self-explanatory on the donation. Thank you very much. Roll call. President Laflamme. Abstain. Roy. Abstain. Tillotson. Yes. Zagorowski. Yes. McAuliffe. Yes. Brooks. Yes. Lopez. Yes. Valkyr. Yes. Krampitz. Yes. Dobis. Yes. Cushane. Yes. Bree. Yes. Finia Costello. Yes. 11 Motion. yes, two abstentions. Motion passes. Motion passes. Okay. What do you want? <laughs> Frank's back. We have a favorable. Can I make, you, have a, you have a question? Uh, sorry, yeah. Can I make a motion that we take order number 34 out of order so that the person in the uh, audience sure. can. Sure. Motion made and second to take item number 34 out of order. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Aye. The motion passes. 34, please. Four. Got it. We have a favorable report from the Ordinance Committee to add to the following in schedule, Thomas Street parking prohibited between signs. Uh, let me see, that would be Councillor Tillotson. What number was it? What, what number number was 34. 34. 34. Top of the, after 33. Top of the page. He's got it. <coughs> yeah. Motion that the uh, ordinance report be received and the ordinance uh, was postponed to the next meeting. Motion made and second that the order, ordinance committee report be received and postponed to the next meeting. On the motion. It didn't get a recommendation from the engineering department, but, but uh, Mr. Cushain wasn't able to make it either. And <clears throat> when we looked at it, my wife and I, it looked like they're they were putting a no parking sign in front of number 21, which is the neighbor, not 25, which is the ladies where Mrs. where the lady lives on Thomas Street. So there was some confusion. So uh, I think it was Councillor Dobaz made a motion that we postpone it uh, to the next meeting when I made that suggestion. And so that's what we did to, so that Mr. Kushan could be there and explain it to us. I didn't think it was a good idea to put a, a no parking sign in front of someone else's house, uh, in front of 21. And the way it's, the way it's <clears throat> set up here, uh, that's the way it seems. The poles change from one side of the street to the other side of the street. Um, and 
uh, if we're going to do that, I think we ought to go back and maybe just go with a note with a uh, with a handicap sign. But uh, anyway, it's postponed, and hopefully, uh, Councillor Cushane will be able to make it at the next meeting and and clear or clarify it for us. Could you have, have a meeting in, before? It's probably the last week in uh, in uh, August, so we can get move it out on one way or the other on September. The first meeting in September. Jim, could you check with the engineers too to come up with to be there? Well, have the engineer. A report. He was not. In yeah, but can we have him there because so we can well, talk? He'll, about he'll be at our meeting. Yes. Thank you. He comes to every meeting. Thank you. Uh, any other comments on the motion? Yes. Go ahead, Councillor uh, Cushain. So the engineer is never going to approve this sign. He didn't approve it the first time I tried to do it two years ago. Uh, you were all at the meeting with the mayor when we discussed this sign. I did it appropriately and according with everybody's decision, so I do not know why this was so hard to go through this past meeting. Um, it was not my fault the meeting was changed from its regular date and I was on vacation. But if you actually look at this sign, the sign in front of the owner of the neighbor's property, their driveway abuts the property line, and then this sign is exactly on the other end of his driveway. So it is not necessarily in front of his house because there is no parking in front of somebody's driveway. So the sign, the reason for the sign where I put it was so that we could put it on a telephone pole and not have to waste time and money and expense on digging a hole and putting a post in the ground when there is nowhere you can park between that sign and the property line because it's all driveway. So it was a very easy uh, thing to do. I don't know why it became so hard. We were all at that meeting. We all discussed it. So it didn't need my presence at this meeting to go through because it was already discussed and decided on before the meeting. Oh, okay. Just a point of information, if I may. Yeah, go ahead. Yeah, it would have been a lot easier if you were present, and, I, and uh, uh, <clears throat> we, the engineer, didn't want, well, didn't go for it. He, he didn't think it was a good idea. Uh, right, the engineer is never going to go we, for we, it. We postponed it. Okay, okay that, that, whoa, 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 whoa. Contra Tillotson has the floor. We postponed it as a guys. That's it. Contra Tillotson's got the floor. We postponed it as a courtesy to you because. Uh, you weren't, weren't there. and uh, Point of order, Mr. President. We were and, supposed and, to go and, through and, the president, and, not directly at other counselors. Yeah, he's, well, he, yeah. So it's, uh, we'll take care of that for, in, 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 in this month. And, and uh, uh, if, if, the, if they agree to, the council agrees to, to uh, go along with what you've got, uh, fine. But uh, there was some confusion, that's all. It may seem simple to you, but when you look at it, order, it President. wasn't that simple. Yeah, Jim. Okay. So, Councilor Cushane, you have the floor now. Right. It, it is simple. If you look at it, if we move the sign six feet to the left, it doesn't do any difference if it goes on the pole because you can't park in front of somebody's driveway. So we weren't taking any parking from the neighbor of this resident. Right. It was, if you look at it, actually, you went out and physically looked at it like I did and decided to put it on those poles for the sake of the city's time and effort and money, and it helped the resident out quicker than later, um, you know, it is simple because that pole is on the outside of their driveway to the right. Their driveway to the left is on the property line, so there's no parking between the six inches of driveway and her property. So it was simple. And this has been going on for two years. You're never gonna get the engineer to approve it, and I don't blame him because he's doing what he legally has to do, which is say, no, it's not appropriate. But we have the final say, not the engineer. That's an opinion. And so, in his professional opinion, which I appreciate, but we are making the exception this time so that we can get some relief to this woman who's been fighting for this for three freaking years. Thank you. Thank you, thank you. Uh, Councilor Krampitz. Yeah, through the, the chair to everyone, I just wanted to, uh, comment about something that actually came up at a utilities uh, committee meeting that Councilor Dobas chaired, and that was uh, Chickabee Electric Light does not want uh, any type of signs on, on their poles. So that may come up uh, later, but I just wanted to inform That's the council in general that that did come up at a meeting. I know the, the order does say in the area of the pole, so that does allow for uh, you know, a sign post to be put in, but yeah. Chickabee Electric Light did not agree to, at this point in time, 
to having signs put on their poles. So I just wanted yeah. to make it. Yeah, okay, aware if we that. can. Uh, Councilor Lopez. Um, just as a, a, a clarification, uh, the last meeting that we had, they actually, Chickabee Electric Light indicated that they actually would be agreeable to working with us yeah. so that we could use yeah. their poles for signage, um, that it would be a separate conversation, but that they actually were in favor of us uh, using their signs because they understood that it was a need and that we work with them and have a good relationship with them. So I, I actually don't believe that that would be uh, an issue. And if that were an issue, we would deal with that if it were to arise. Thank you. If it's the will of board, I'd like to say a comment if I, I could. It. All in favor? Opposed? Right. Thank you. Um, I, I kind of agree with Councilor Lopez. What he did say was right now he couldn't do it because of the fact that he wants to work with us. The part was, was half of them were Verizon phones too. It was a mutual f uh, polls. So um, we did have the Verizon in too, and I actually spoke to them too. So he, they couldn't give the permission because they, they share the, the polls. So on the city side, He's not against it, but he, he can't uh, approve it without working with them. And that's my understanding. And the second part is with Councilor uh, Cushane's issue down in Willamancet, uh, he's correct. And we had a meeting um, in Ward uh, 7 at the, uh, the uh, police substation, and we worked with the uh, young lady there on her issues. And uh, one of the things that did come up was the maybe a handicap, but handicap commission uh, can't do it either. So the idea was to try because she needs the ambulance uh, uh, more often or care uh, vehicles coming to her home. It was it was tight. So we looked out as as Councilor Cushane said an alternative where we can uh, uh, engineers not in favor of it, but um, for the safety of these people, we decided to look into putting it forward. And I was one of them. So we'll take it up in ordinance, and uh, we're going to have to make sure we do our homework so we can close this one. Thank you. Any other comments, Councilor? Uh, uh, Mary Beth uh, Costello. Uh, Frank, um, yeah. in regards to the telephone poles, I think that gets a little confusing because you have two entities that own it. You have Verizon and you have our electric light department. So um, how do we know that Verizon's going to agree to this? We don't know that. Do we know President Laflamme at this point? If I could, through the chair, um, we had a utilities meeting, um, and I did talk to them, and they were so they have different divisions. They were going to go back to their division, and because they're using some of our polls, so okay. I asked them to work together with us for some issues that we have where we can't put the pipes in the ground because of gas pipes or something, and we needed to. So she was going to go back and get it, give it to uh, our office, um, someone to a representative to, so we can have this discussion in utilities in the near future. Okay, so right now everything is up in the air until Correct. everything gets nailed down. Correct. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you. Frank, Any other comments? Councilor Zygorowski. Oh, didn't they say they would uh, okay strapping a uh, sign? No, that was my suggestion, and that's not been okay yet. That, yeah. Because they don't want to put nails in it because it weakens the pool, but straps are what we're going to be looking into. Councilor Cushain, second time, final time. Okay. Yep, just one point of information. It is not impossible. Uh, Verizon and CLD have worked together because I have signs in Ward 7 on telephone poles with straps. Thank you. We'll discuss this uh, at that meeting. Anyone else? Seeing none, all in favor? Opposed, and the motion passes. Favorable report from the Utilities Committee. Be it ordered that the Utilities Committee meet with Eversource and city officials to discuss issues on Jacob Street. Okay, what number is that? I'm sorry. 21. Back to, 21. back to 21. 21. Councilor Tillotson. Utilities Committee? Yeah. Oh, I'm sorry. Councilor Dobas. Uh, motion that the uh, order is received and the uh, committee report is placed on file, please. Motion made say, second that the ordinance committee report be received and placed on file. On the motion. Uh, on the motion. I guess I'll start uh, 21 and orders uh, 21 and 22 on our agenda are identical tonight because we met. Uh, we had two utility committee meetings um, and we met twice about this uh, issue on Jacobs Street uh, in between the last city council meeting and this city council meeting. So for the public's benefit, that's why it's on the agenda twice tonight. Um, the original uh, followers of the motion were Councilors uh, Laflamme and uh, Costello. Uh, there was an issue where uh, Eversource was doing work in Ward 9 on Jacob Street and the surrounding area. Uh, they sent uh, notifications out in April uh, for a date that didn't exist. They said that there'd be work, I believe, on uh, 
what, June 31st, is that correct? June and, 31st, uh, 2022. Which is not a real date. Uh, and, uh, and then, you know, fast forward to, to now, obviously it's a few months since April and, and uh, they didn't do any new notifications. So residents were surprised by the work and then, um, there was also additional issues where um, they closed down the whole street, which is uh, against the law. They have to uh, allow for emergency vehicles to uh, to access the street. Uh, and so, uh, you know, as a committee, we you know we will we, we met with EverSource. Um, the first meeting, EverSource is not available, but we heard from a lot of residents. The second meeting, uh, EverSource was there. Um, you know, we told them that they had to do a better job of uh, notifying residents. We might look in the future at you know, possibly uh, a adding a restriction to these types of projects where Eversource has to notify residents within so many days of the actual project. You know, you can't notify somebody, you know, six months in advance and then, you know, and then do the work six months later because then residents will forget or they won't, you know, they won't be aware of it. Uh, and then the other thing we ordered them to do was to work with our police and, and, and fire. Uh, and uh, I, I believe actually police and DPW are the only two that are allowed to close the roads, but we, we you know, we ordered them um, to work with our, our uh, you know, city officials um, because it is against the law to completely close a road. You have to allow for emergency vehicles to go through. So those are the two main issues, but I'm going to, I'll turn it over to uh, the, the filers of the motion, Councillor uh, well, Costello. Gonna, or uh, yeah, go ahead, Councillor Costello. You. Yeah, th there were problems with this because the communication between Eversource and, and Councillor Balak here is agreeing, um, between Eversource and the residents did not exist. Um, they did not know when this project was actually going to begin and end. And there is an obligation by Eversource to do proper notifications and communicate with the residents. So uh, Councillor Laflam and I uh, filed this so that Eversource could come in. Councillor Dobas did a great job in regards to the um, the functioning of the meeting to make sure that Eversource will not do this again in any other project within the city uh, because it did get confusing. Um, Councilor Flam is following up on this to make sure that any problems in the future they'll be addressed. And again, I want to thank Councilor Balakir because he was in 100% agreement that the communication between Eversource and the residents of Jacob Street has to be improved. Thank you. Thank you. Councillor Cushane. Uh, I'll set, I didn't have my hand up. Councillor Bell here. Okay. No, I know, but I'm looking at my phone too. I got to do both. <laughs> <laughs> Me next, so I, that might have been from the last one. Councillor Bellick here. Yeah, yeah thank you. Uh, dovetailing my, uh, council, my fellow councillor's comments, uh, I think some of this basically could come down to a couple of words of failure to communicate between the parties. And um, so uh, our chairman, uh, Councillor Dobas, uh, reference that we need to have a much better line of communication in order to try to help clear up this issue. So that was, that was one of the main sticking points of the meeting. Thank you. Thank you. Any other comments? Thank you. Okay. All in favor? Opposed? The motion passes. So a favorable report from the Utilities Committee. Be it order that the Utilities Committee meet with Eversource and city officials to discuss issues on J Jacob Street. Councilor Dobas. Uh, same course, Mr. President. Motion made and second that the ordinance uh, utilities committee be report be received and approved this evening uh, on the motion. Uh, on the motion, we uh, just discussed it. It's the same issue same, we just same met issue. Thank you. Any other comments? All in favor? Aye. Opposed? The motion passes. So a favorable report from the utilities committee that the utilities committee meet with Chigabee Electric Light to receive and discuss yearly updates. Councilor DeVos. Uh, motion that the orders received and the utilities report be placed on file. Motion made and second that the Utilities Committee report be received and placed on file. On the motion. On the motion, Mr. President, uh, you know, embarrassingly, I don't have my utilities notes with me, but we had a very, very good discussion. Uh, I want to thank all the city councilors that attended. There were quite a few. Um, you know, we, we had a really good discussion with them. Uh, the uh, Crossroads Fiber Internet by Chicago Electric Light, uh, it's still scheduled to be completed by 2026 as of now. Um, Jim Wazowski, the Chicopee Electric Light Director, uh, said that, you know, it could be a problem is getting materials in the future. Uh, I believe our current contract expires this year, I believe either uh, in August or September. Uh, and um, 
you know, at the moment, it, it costs Chickabee Electric Light approximately fourteen hundred to hook up each additional home. And again, I want to remind the public that it's that this is not a cost that's it, it's free. The first the first installation is free to the public, but it costs Chickabee Electric Light fourteen hundred. Uh, unfortunately, that's going to go up uh, when our contract expires for materials. Um, I believe it, it expires either this month or next month. Um, so unfortunately, that that expense is going to increase for Chickabee Electric Light, and and of course, it's going to go up over time. Um, but uh, hopefully we can get it built out. The, uh, the main infrastructure hopefully will get built out by 2026, um, which is the current schedule. Um, we had a really good discussion. Uh, obviously, energy prices are, you know, are wild uh, worldwide. Uh, so, um, you know, Chicago Electric Light's doing their best to, uh, you know, try to purchase, you know, futures, try to stabilize the price as much as possible. Um, I also asked, you know, uh, Jim Wazowski is, you know, obviously retiring soon, and, um, you know, uh, Jim Katie, or Jeff, excuse me, Jeff Katie, Jeff Katie retired uh, somewhat recently. Uh, Jim Wazowski is going to be with us, um, you know, for, for probably about another, another year and a half, and then we're going to be, you know, they're going to uh, post the job for Chicago Electric Light Director, uh, both uh, locally and regionally. Um, so I wanted the, uh, the public to know that. That's going to be a, a, a very big position. Um, we, we talked about a, a variety of things, including, uh, you know, alternative energy, um, you know, uh, how much money is, is, is owed, uh, who's paying their bills, who isn't. Um, they said it is getting better uh, at the height of the pandemic. Um, you know, there are a lot of people who weren't paying their electric bills, but um, Jim Wazowski said that, you know, that we're in a much better situation now than we were a year, a year ago, two, year, two years ago. So people are starting to pay their bills, so I want to thank the public for that. Um, and uh, beyond that, it was just a good discussion. I'm, I'm, uh, I'm happy that we do this yearly update. Uh, it's the chance for committee members to ask Chicago Electric Light, you know, pretty much anything. And uh, so I want to thank my colleagues that, that attended. Thank you. Thank you. Any other comments? All in favor? <coughs> Opposed? Right. The motion passes. We have a favorable report from the Utilities Committee. Be it order that the Utilities Subcommittee meet with Eversource and city officials to discuss issues at 357 Burnett Road. Councilor Dumas. A uh, motion that the order is received and the uh, Utilities Committee report be placed on file, please. Motion made and second that the Utilities Committee report be received and placed on file. On the motion. Uh, on the motion, Mr. President, uh, we just had a couple concerns, or excuse me, well, I, I, I was the original uh, filer of this motion. I had a couple concerns um, about the uh, Eversource uh, utilities over the uh, proposed uh, Burnett Road truck stop. There's going to be a, a very a proposed, uh, very large above ground fuel tank. Uh, and I had concerns because there's main power lines that go over that fuel tank. So we met with Eversource and the, uh, the uh, applicant for the proposed Burnett Road truck stop. Um, I think we had a, a, a decent meeting. Um, there was some confusion on my part. Uh, so I, I guess Eversource. Um, or Eversource has to sign off on the project because they own some of the parking lot, so they had to sign an easement. Uh, and uh, but it was my understanding when I filed this that Eversource had to sign off because of nearby gas lines. So that was my mistake when I filed this. Um, but we still had a, a productive meeting. I want to make sure that Eversource uh, is okay with uh, the above ground fuel storage tanks, given that the main power lines go over the fuel tank. Uh, and uh, we also requested uh, some additional information from Eversource. Uh, I requested, you know, anything, uh, you know, a anything related to this property uh, that, that Eversource uh, is involved with to be presented to the license committee for August 8th. I think it's important uh, for the city council to get that information before voting on uh, Monday, August 8th. So that was, that was basically the outcome uh, of the meeting. Um, I'm not sure if uh, our council president wants to add anything, but uh, I think I'll, I'll, uh, I'll leave it at that. Thank no, you. No, you did a good job. Thank you. Councilor McAuliffe. Yes, thank you. It was a great meeting, and Eversource quickly responded um, to some of the requests for uh, information and did um, send over to us some information about um, the fact that they conditionally authorized the activities proposed in their um, Eversource right of way, uh, and uh, more official information comes as they go closer through the process. So I just want the public to know that uh, Eversource was very responsive um, in that process, uh, and the two folks that attended on their behalf were very informative. Thank, Thank you. you. Any other comments? All in favor? Opposed, the motion passes. We have a favorable report from the Human Resource Committee of the appointment of Jan Resnick as a member of the Ambulance Commission. Councilor Tillotson. Motion that the committee report be received and the person confirmed. Motion made a second that the committee, HR committee report be received and approved this evening. On the motion. 
an emotional. No, he was seemed well qualified, and I uh, got a good report from the committee, and I, I think he's going to be okay. All in favor? Aye. Or any other comments first? I'm sorry. Did anybody? No. Seeing none. All in favor? Opposed? The motion passes. We have a favorable ordinance committee report to add to the following in schedule: One Way Street, Old Lyman Road. Councilor Tillotson. Number 26, Jim. 26, Jim. Separated my fingers. Okay. Yeah, yeah uh, that, was a, that was an informational meeting. Nothing has changed there. Yeah, thank you. Okay, so make a motion. motion okay. Motion to accept the report and place it on file. Motion made and second to receive the ordinance committee report and place on file. On a motion. On a motion uh, that. Uh, <clears throat> Mary Beth Penny Costello was trying to give everybody an opportunity to be heard, and uh, so this was basically an informational meeting. There was a large crowd there, the large, one of the largest I've seen in a while, and uh, but it was informational. The the ordinance has already been passed. It's a one-way street now, and it'll remain that way until somebody deletes this one and adds adds it back the way it was. So, uh, but I thought it went off well. People were excited, but I thought it was well behaved and people had a chance to say what they wanted to say. And, uh, and, and, and as a result, I think we've done all we can do at that point uh, up to now. It's still a one-way street at this point. Thank you. Councilor uh, Mary Beth Costello. Thanks. I, I wasn't able to attend the meeting in person because of uh, a medical issue. Um, but um, what I heard in the meeting was a lot of conversation and dialogue in regards to does it stay a one-way street, does it go back to a two-way street. Um, the superintendent of public works, um, Elizabeth Batista, did indicate that her recommendation is that um, it stays a one-way street, that there are federal guidelines, and these guidelines indicate that a street like Old Lyman Road, which is roughly this particular section, about 275 feet, in order to meet the federal guidelines, it has to be 22 feet wide. And this street, according to the city engineer and the superintendent of Department of Public Works, is only 16 feet wide. And that's not in the wintertime, when it can get even narrower with snow banks. So as it stands right now, it's gonna be a one-way street, um, but the recommendation is given by the city engineer and also by the superintendent of public works. Thank you. Thank you. Any other comments? Councilor Dobas. Oh, Councilor Dobas, I'm sorry. Oh, thank you, uh, Mr. President. Um, yeah, what, uh, what a mess this issue was, just very controversial. Um, but uh, I, I want to just go on the record that I, I do support the one-way street. I, I uh, want to you know, commend Councilor Costello for filing this, and she did quite a bit of research on this issue. Uh, I did get the chance to go down there and review uh, the one-way street in person. Uh, I'm also on the ordinance committee. I was there at that meeting, and uh, I also want to you know, commend Councilor Tillotson. I think you ran a very fair meeting, and I, you know, I think, you've, you've, uh, I think you've, you've run the most fair meetings for these controversial issues. Uh, there were quite a few people at that meeting. I'd say there was 40 or 50 people there. Uh, it was a pretty good crowd. And, um, you know, it's kind of a, you know, a, a, an issue. I mean, uh, the, the engineer and, and DPW director support the one-way street, uh, and the fire and police chief uh, did not support the one-way street. They believe that there could be better solutions. Uh, I, I do support the one-way street. I think it's just too narrow. Uh, I don't live in that neighborhood, so I don't know all of the issues, but uh, it's just a very narrow uh, stretch of road. Um, a lot of the concerns of, of the uh, opposition seem to be from streets that said that they, they would face negative consequences because of the one way. So, uh, you know, maybe I'll, you know, I'd like to support uh, Councilor Costello maybe looking at, uh, you know, some of the nearby streets, you know, and maybe we can, you know, iron out some of those problems as well. Um, but, you know, it, the street is just too narrow. It's just too narrow. I don't believe that it's that it was safe before. Uh, there was a school bus accident mentioned in 2019 there. Um, and, uh, you know, so I I'm fully support Councilor Costello. Uh, and, uh, you know, I mean, the, the street is just too narrow. So I, you know, unfortunately, I, I mean, I, I support the one way. I know that, you know, it, 
I think people will get used to it. Mm -hmm. um, it, it seemed to be, I mean, there were a lot of people for it too. I, wanna, I don't want to make it sound like everyone's against it. There were a lot of people for it. There were a lot of people against it. Um, but I think most of the people against it are just nervous that, you know, they live on a nearby street and they're afraid that more traffic might be directed up their street. But we can, we can work on solutions uh, to help out the nearby streets as well. So I support the one-way street. I want to thank Councillor Costello and Councillor Tillotson uh, for their work on this. Uh, and, uh, you know, I think it, that area is a lot safer. Thank, thank you. Thank you. Councillor Lopez. Yeah, I just want to also go on the record and commend Councillor Cosello for her work on this. Uh, since the very first meeting, the first time we talked about this, I supported her and the residents on this. Uh, I believe that, you know, no one knows best than the folks who live on that street and the ward counselor who supports those folks. So uh, thank you for your, your work on this, your research. The, the residents spoke about how, uh, how efficient you've been with this issue. And I also agree with Councillor Dobaz that... Um, we can address some of the other concerns. Every resident that lived on that street that came forward from the very first meeting expressed that they supported the one-way street. They're the ones who are impacted the absolute most. Uh, and this is a safety issue. And when it comes to safety issues, I'm gonna 100% ride with the counselor who uh, wants to increase safety for the neighborhood. So thank you for that. Uh, I continue to support the one-way. I agree with DPW uh, and it was, I, I think it, it was the right move it's to, to put this one-way street. So thank you. Thank you. Councillor Costello, second time. Thank you, Councillor Lopez and uh, Councillor Dobas for bringing up um, the traffic increase possibly in the neighborhood streets around it. And I met with um, the DPW director, Elizabeth Batista, yesterday, and she's going to do a study on the streets, especially when the children go back to school. So right now, um, I haven't gotten a lot of complaints on increased traffic. There's been a few uh, discussions with people about it, um, but it's something that we're not gonna forget. We're gonna be looking at the increased traffic on the Riviere, on uh, Dean, and on Anson Street, so that if there are problems, they can be looked at. But thank you all for uh, having these hearings and listening to the information from the public. Thank you. Thank you. Anybody on Zoom? Seeing none. All in favor? Opposed? The motion passes. Next we have the Chapter 7 Ordinance Revisions. Councilor Tillotson. Motion that <coughs> the Chapter 7 Ordinance be received and placed on file. Motion made a second that the Ordinance Committee report be received and placed on file. On the motion. On the motion. This was already taken care of on 7-19-22. So uh, we're just going to, somehow it got on the agenda again. So we'll just place it on file. Uh, the, the one that we've already sent to the committee was the one that was updated. Thank you. Any other comments? All in favor? Opposed? The motion passes. A favorable report from the Ordinance Committee be it ordained by the City Council of the Code of the City of Chicopee for the year 1991 as amended and it's hereby further amended as follows. Add Chapter 260. 260-31 penalties. Councilor Tillotson. That the ordinance committee report be received. The ordinance take a second and final reading and be enrolled and ordained. Motion made and second that the ordinance committee report be received and take its second and final reading and be enrolled and ordained on the motion. On the motion, I'll yield to Councilor Cushain. Councilor Cushain. Which one was that, sir? 28. 28. Yeah, these are five that are attached to one of the uh, ordinances that I broke down. Didn't have mine, didn't the uh, section, so we had to add mine. Thank you. Any other comments? All in favor? Then we a, call a roll on this. Oh, a roll on this one, I'm sorry. President Laflamme? Yes. Roy? Jerry? Yes. Thank you. Tillotson? Yes. Zagorowski? Yes. McAuliffe? Yes. Brooks? Yes. Lopez? Yes. Falkir? Yes. Krampitz? Yes. Obis? Yes. Cushane? Bill? Bill? Yes, can't hear him. Labrie? Yes. Piniac Costello? Yes. 13 yes. And the motion passes. We have a favorable report from the Ordinance Committee, be it ordained by the City Council that the Code of the City of Chicopee for the year 1991 as amended, being hereby further amended as follows. Add to Chapter 260-31, engine brakes prohibited. Add Carew Street. Councilor Tillotson. Motion that the Ordinance Committee report be received, take a second final reading, and be enrolled and ordained. 
Motion made and second the Ordinance Committee report be received, take its second and final reading and be enrolled and ordained on the motion. I uh, yield to Councilor Krampitz. Yeah, Councilor Krampitz. Yeah. Uh, yes, this was a uh, constituent request. There had been some uh, issues with engine breaking on Carew and uh, he had called the police and the police notified him uh, that, you know, Carew wasn't on the ordinance uh, for it. So this is to uh, correct that and, and add it uh, to that. Thank, Thank you. you. Any other comments? Seeing none, roll call. President Laflamme. Yes. Roy. Yes. Tillotson. Yes. Zagorowski. Yes. McCullough. Yes. Brooks. Yes. Lopez. Yes. Valkyr. Yes. Krampitz. Yes. Dobis. Yes. Cushain. Yes. Labrie. Yes. Pinia Costello. Yes. 13 yes. And a motion passes. We have a favorable report with a postponement uh, from the Ordinance Committee, be it or ordered that the DPW install no truck sign on 83 Hampshire Street. Councilor <coughs> Tilton. Motion that the ordinance can report be received. The, the ordinance uh, be postponed and the uh, to, a, tra to a traffic study is made by the state. Motion made and second the ordinance committee report be received and postpone until the traffic study is complete. On the motion. On the motion, though, we wait, gotta wait for the city to do a study and then the state to agree to it. And then when we get the results of that, then we can move forward on it. It'll be in the committee until that, until that happens. Thank uh, you. <laughs> Councilor Costello. Thank you. Uh, you. Councilor Tillotson is correct. This has been postponed until the study can be done. It's a very small street, it's narrow, and trucks going through that area make it difficult for the residents. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, do we need a roll call? No. Nope, All postponed. in favor? Right. Opposed? The motion passes. We have a favorable report from the Ordinance Committee to add to the following in schedule Broadway Street, parking prohibited. Councilor Tillotson. Uh, motion that the ordinance committee report be received. The ordinance take a second and final reading and be enrolled on ordained. Uh, motion made that the ordinance committee report be received, take its si second and final reading and be enrolled and ordained on the motion. And I'll yield to Councilor Krampus. Yeah. Councilor Krampus. Uh, this was uh, an order that uh, was co-sponsored with Councilor Zagorowski. It's actually an, uh, a request that he received. So. I will defer to Councilor Zagorowski. Councilor Zagorowski. Yeah, the, the order was amended to 30 feet on the recommendation of the city engineer. And what happened is right here is just a uh, parking problem that uh, people coming out of certain streets can't get out. So this hopefully will eliminate some of the problems. Thank you. Any other comments? Seeing none, roll call. President Laflamme? Yes. Roy? Yes. Billitson? Yes. Zagorowski? Yes. McCullough? Yes. Brooks? Yes. Lopez? Yes. Valkyr? Yes. Krampitz? Yes. Dobis? Yes. Cushain? Yes. Labrie? Yes. Piniac Costello? Yes. 13 yes. And a motion passes. We have a favorable report from the Ordinance Committee to add to the following in schedule isolated stop sign, Blanchard Street. Councilor Tillotson. Motion that the Ordinance Committee report be received. The Ordinance take a second and final reading and be enrolled and ordained. Motion made and second that the Ordinance Committee report be received. Take its second and final reading and be enrolled and ordained on the motion. The motion I'll yield to Councilor Mary, ben Mary Beth Piniac Costello. Thank you, uh, Councilor uh, Costello. Councilor uh, Councilor Tillerson, thank you, Councilor Laflamme. Okay. Yes, you. Um, Blanchard Street and Britton Street are um, streets that are traveled. Um, I did a, um, a um, counting the cars on Britton Street back in late June, early July, and about 125 cars per hour travel Britton Street between the hours of four and six during the rush hour. So to eliminate any problems and to increase safety, this particular um, stop sign would be beneficial for the area. Thank you. Thank you. Any other comments? Roll call, please. President Laflamme. Yes. Roy. Yes. Billiton. Yes. Zagorowski. Yes. McAuliffe. Yes. Brooks. Yes. Lopez. Yes. Valkyr. Yes. Krampitz. Yes. Dobis. Yes. Cushain. Yes. Three. Yes. Pinia Costello. Yes. 13 yes. And a motion passes. We have a favorable report from the Ordinance Committee to add to the following in schedule, Britain Street, commercial vehicles excluded. Council Tilton. Motion that the Ordinance Committee report be, uh, 
We receive the ordinance, take a second and final reading and be enrolled and ordained. Motion made and seconded that the ordinance committee report be received, take its second and final reading and be enrolled and ordained on the motion. Uh, all, uh, this, is, uh, this again is subject to the state approving the traffic study that, that will be done and it will remain in the committee until such time as the traffic study is completed. Thank you. Any other comments? All in well, we, do you want the motion to be enrolled and ordained? Well, then we better not ordain it. Uh, because you got to well, wait for we, the traffic Well, why don't we study. just, we could drop that and just. Okay, motion it. that the order be received and take its second reading. It's, uh, but not second be Second reading and, uh, rem and remain in the committee until we get the. Uh, Postponed to the traffic study. To the traffic right? study. Yeah, right? Uh, right. If you enroll and ordain state. it, you're going to yeah. make it long. Yeah, okay. Right. Okay, so. Postponed until the traffic study. Correct. Correct. Got it. Roll call. Uh, no, motion to place on file. Yeah, All postponed. in favor? Opposed? The motion passes. Favorable report from the Ordinance Committee to add to the following in schedule, handicap parking, 19 Hope Street. Council Tillotson. Motion that the Ordinance Committee report be received. The Ordinance take a second final reading and be enrolled on ordained. Motion that the or Ordinance Committee report take its second and final reading and be enrolled and ordained on the motion. And I'll yield to Councillor Cushane. Councillor Cushane. Uh, this was a considerate request um, and I appreciate everybody's help on getting this passed. Thank you. Any other comments? Roll call, please. President Laflamme. Yes. Roy? Yes. Tillotson? Yes. Zagorowski? Yes. McAuliffe? Yes. Brooks? Yes. Lopez? Yes. Falkir? Yes. Krampitz? Yes. Sobis? Yes. Cushane? Yes. Three. Yes. Pinia Costello. Out of chair. Twelve yes, one out of chair. Motion passes. And the motion passes. Thank you. We have a favorable report from the zoning committee uh, for a special permit application under Chapter 275-9 for the purpose of installing small wireless facility on nine existing utility poles located at 880 Burnett Road, 496 Springfield Street. 179 Royal Street, 454 Chigabee Street, 854 Grattan Street, 1090 Burnett Road, 1616 Memorial Drive, and 840 Memorial Drive, 113 Joy Street. Applicant, Selco Partnership, doing business as Verizon Wireless. Councilor Bellacir. Motion that the uh, favorable zoning subcommittee report be received. Motion made and second that the zoning committee report be received and approved this evening. On the motion. Uh, on the motion. Um, this is uh, installing uh, small wireless antennas on nine existing utility poles. And this is uh, between the CEL and Verizon Wireless. And uh, I'm making this subject to the special permit application be approved. The conditions stated in the SPRAC report and be met by the applicant. And this is a permit to run with the applicant. Thank you. Any other comments? Uh, roll call, please. President Laflamme. Yes. Roy? Yes. Tillotson? Yes. Zagorowski? Yes. McAuliffe? Yes. Brooks? Yes. Lopez? Yes. Falkir? Yes. Krampitz? Yes. Sobis? Yes. Cushane? Yes. Bree? Yes. Penny and Costello? 12 yes, one out of chair. And the motion passes. Be it ordered that Absolute Motors Inc. 245 East Street be called in before the Chicopee License Committee and the City Council to discuss the license currently held by Absolute Motors Inc. Concert Krampitz. Motion that the order be received and sent to the license committee for a public hearing. Motion made and second that the order, the order be received and sent to the license committee for a public hearing on the motion. Yeah, there's uh, been some issues with the, the property, uh, uh, particularly uh, with the, the neighbors. Uh, so we're going to have a uh, public hearing uh, to bring them in. I am aware that um, you know next week is the license committee meeting for August. So I'm fine with this you know going on the September agenda uh this is not a rush but uh since some of the issues are related to snow plowing in the winter uh if it can be on the september agenda that would be great thank you thank you, okay. thank you. any other comments seeing none all in favor oppose the motion passes be it ordered that the dpw install a double-sided slow children's sign at 53 william street be canceled uh concert crampets Motion that the order be received and the cancellation sent to DPW. Motion made and second that the order be received and the cancellation uh, be sent to the DPW for implementation. implementation on the motion. Yeah, I had filed an order uh, for this uh, last month and then received a call shortly before the sign was going in that they did not want it 
in front of their house. Uh, so the next order on the agenda is to take care of that. Thank you. Any other comments? All in favor? Oppose the motion passes. The order that the DPW install a slow children sign on William Street, south side, approximately 30 feet from Broadway. Councilor Krampitz. Motion that the order be received, and I would like to withdraw it tonight. Motion made second that the order be received and be withdrawn this evening. On the motion. Uh, after some discussion tonight uh, with my, uh, from my fellow councilors about uh, uh, putting signs on telephone poles, this would probably actually be a good appropriate use for that uh, since it's really not distance dependent. So I will withdraw it at this time and then refile it to go on a telephone pole once I hear back from President Laflamme uh, that we can go ahead and do so. Thank you. All in favor? Uh, any other comments? Seeing none, all in favor, opposed, the motion passes. Be in order that the Public Safety Committee meet to discuss the Litwin School neighborhood. Number 40, Jim, you want to take it for me? Yeah, motion that the uh, order be approved. Uh, and, uh, there's a lot of issues out there. In fact, that was one of, the, one of the main things that came up at the meeting that the mayor had out there. Their, their meeting was, was traffic and how do you get to school on to get to Litwin School and how they, the speeding on Morrow Drive and so forth and so on. Uh, so I was more than happy to co-sign along with this, see if we can't come up with something. Uh, maybe, one of these, maybe one of these bumps on the street will help. We got out there on Front Street. But anyway, uh, there, uh, that was a major issue and I, I would yield now to Councillor Dobas because uh, he uh, lives out there and he's a helper. Councilor he's Dobas. a maker of this motion as well. I want, to I want to thank the at-large counselors uh, for filing this. I appreciate it a lot. I also want to thank the uh, Ward 6 School Committee Representative uh, Sam Shumsky and the uh, Mayor's Office as well. Uh, not all, I mean, obviously I'm the Ward 6 representative, but this is also the direct neighborhood uh, that I live in uh, every, every night. Um, in, uh, so I just want to bring a couple things. Uh, since I've been in office, uh, you know, we've held at least uh, at least two uh, hearings on this street. I think I think actually three, but I think one of them was for speeding citywide. Um, we had three different public hearings on traffic issues about this street. Um, you know, we did have enforcement in the past. I know these neighbors had a petition at one point with over 120 signatures on it. Uh, I did work with the mayor's office uh, in the last year, uh, and the mayor's office did uh, approve a crosswalk at the uh, intersection of Morrow Drive, uh, Post Road, Olco, and Litwin Lane. So I want to thank the mayor's office for, for uh, installing that crosswalk and approving those funds. Uh, but obviously, there's still a lot of issues on the street. There's some, a lot of speeding going on, some um, you know, enforcement issues. It's a difficult street as well to enforce speeding because uh, there's only one um, uh, intersection between the four-way stop and Burnett Road. There's only one real place that the police can easily uh, enforce speeding. Um, so I want to thank the at-large counselors for looking at this issue, um, and I want to thank the residents who've, who've been advocating for the street. Uh, you know, it'd be my personal recommendation that, you know, maybe we look at what George Ballack here did on Front Street there with the... Um, the speed tables. If they put a speed table on Morrow Drive and a speed table on Olco, uh, I think that would really solve most of the speeding issues and, and you know, it'd be really difficult to speed over a, a speed table. Uh, I know um, the Sam Sh uh, School Committee Rep Shumsky is working with the mayor's office on a potential traffic study uh, or the potential for a traffic light. Uh, I'm not sure that's what the residents want, but I, you know, anything in the interest of the neighborhood, I appreciate. I appreciate all the effort, and I want to thank the at-large guys. I can't thank you enough for looking at this issue. Uh, thank you. Thank you. If it's a will of order, I'd like to, as a co-sponsor, to speak if I could. All in favor? Opposed to the motion. Pass. Okay. Um, when I originally did this, I called uh, everybody, but there's. Um, I would like to put on this order to request the following people to attend this meeting: um, the representative from Sunshine Village, the principal of this Litwin School, the police department, the fire department, and the what was this? The DBW. Uh, and the reason. Partially why I asked for this is I talked to the Councilor Tillotson and several others about it is because of the fact this was brought up at the neighborhood meeting quite loudly and 
um, I, I wanted to put this one here that it, w it should have read um, on this here, and I'm, not, I'm looking for the actual paperwork, but it was supposed to say the Litwin uh, School Neighborhood only uh, to discuss that issue. I'm, I don't want this meeting to turn into the pilot program, the pilot gas station, or nothing else. This one here is just to talk about the Oakle Circle area with the lit, um, with the Morrow Drive and that. So that's why I asked for. Hopefully, it'll be a small amount of people because uh, the uh, superintendent has many um, ideas, um, as it was mentioned. Um, and there's a lot out there. Everybody's throwing everything out. And as uh, Councilor Doba said. Um, um, Sam Shumsky uh, brought some things to together and I think we should all get together as a team and look at it in a smaller venue so that we can discuss and get some ideas there because some ideas were uh, exactly the, uh, the the speed table um, and I did get several calls again about not having the light at the end of the street um, the idea was the four corners was paint the corners uh, paint the streets so there's a lot of ideas but we got to put them together to implement it and and so that's what this meeting is going to be for. So I thank all the city council at large who sponsored it, and uh, uh, Councilor Dobaz, and uh, also um, Mr. Shumsky, who also sponsored it. So thank you for sending it to uh, public safety. Thank you. Any other comments? All in favor? Opposed? The motion passes. Be in order that the city council accept the attached request for withdrawal for the special permit at 28 Grape Street and hereby revokes said special permit granted on 7 5 2022. Contra Balakir. Motion that the order be received and that the request to withdraw the special permit 28 Grape Street be granted this evening. Motion made a second that the order be received and the special permit for 7 5 22 be. Would you wear it? What did you want? I'm sorry. Uh, that that the special permit be um, denied or, uh, take, or, or removed this evening. Motion to be denied. To be. Oh, to be removed this evening. Oh, to be removed from the agenda. Revoked. Revoked. Yes, to revoke revoked. Revoked. Okay, yeah, motion revoked. to revoke tonight. Order, on the motion. Order, right. right. On the motion, uh, this was a special permit that was granted on July 5th, 2022, uh, regarding a parking lot on 28 Grape Street. However, the closing fell through due to seller error and the applicant wishes to withdraw the special permit. Thank you. Any other comments? Do we need a roll call? We do need yes. a call roll. Uh, roll call, please. President LaFlamme. Yes. Roy? Yes. Billiton? Yes. Zagorowski? Yes. McAuliffe? Yes. Brooks? Yes. Lopez? Yes. Valkyr? Yes. Crampets? Yes. Dobis? Cushain? Yes. Abri. Yes. Piniac Costello. Yes. 13 yes. And the motion passes. Be it ordered that the ordinance committee meet to discuss issues on Nye Street. Councilor Costello. Motion that the order be received and referred to the ordinance committee for further discussion. Motion made and second that the order be received and sent to the ordinance committee for discussion on the issue. Yes. On June 7th, we decided that we were going to have uh, the law department and the building department look on look at the issue on Nye Street in regards to a playscape that's in an apartment complex. But the playscape looks into the resident's bedroom. So there's no privacy there. So that's why I'm asking if we can get an update from the law department and from the building department, because this could happen to anybody else in another ward where the playscapes are large. Okay, thank you. Thank you, Councilor Tillotson. The uh, building department said there's nothing he can do. It's, it's far enough back away from the property that he has no authority to do anything. The law department says the same thing. It's a civil matter. So I don't know what, what we're gonna talk about at the- yeah at the meeting, if you, but you can send it if you choose, but I mean, I think it's pretty well, pretty cut and dry at this point. Okay. Uh, um, I haven't received, I'm, and I'm sorry, Councillor Tillotson, well, but I haven't received anything in writing. I, I, okay, I so let, we'll send it to your committee, Jim. She wants it in writing. What's that? She wants to see it in writing, right, that's why. Right, so I can show it to All right, yeah. so we'll. Okay. Thank you, thank you, Jim. Thank you, sure. Councillor Tillotson. We'll do that. Yeah. Thank you, Councillor. All in favor? Opposed, the motion has it. Be it ordered that the DPW install missing stop okay, signs right. at the intersection of Old Lyman Road and Ludlow Road. Councilor Costello. Motion that the order be received 
and referred to the ordinance subcommittee, please. Motion made and second that the order be received and sent to the ordinance subcommittee for a public hearing on the motion. Again, this is a, a stop sign request by residents in the area. Um, there are uh, traffic issues in regards to the intersection of Old Lyman Road and Ludlow Road. Thank you. It's, uh, Thanks. Okay, we'll go to ordinance with it. Any other comments? Seeing none, all in favor? Opposed, the motion has it. Just a point of information on that last one. If you know that the, the law has already been passed for these stop signs, are they supposed uh, to be there? I, I, I checked and it, I think there was one that wasn't. I checked uh, with Agnes. Okay. We reviewed it on Friday. Yeah, we'll send it to committee. We'll just, yeah. but, but it's yeah. pointed, if they're just missing, you can just send it to DBW on your own. Okay. Just call them and say, hey, put the sign up. It says it on the ordinance. Okay. Or use a C click fix up. And then if you, if you're or filing. Or use a C click fix up. Okay. Yep. And if you're filing for a new one, it's got to be in a different format. It's going to be beat ordained. Okay. All right. And yep. then uh, site specific. I know that. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Yep. Be in order that the DPW install a curb barrier at 800 Prospect Street. Councilor Costello. Motion that the order be received and referred to the ordinance subcommittee. Uh, um, in, uh, maybe this one. Would you think of this the. This should uh, go to DP, uh, DPW, shouldn't it? Our DPW. For instance, yeah. Because it's, it's not an ordinance. No. She's looking to put a piece of Public curbing works. on in front of a house, correct? Uh, uh, yeah. Councillor McAuliffe suggested maybe not ordinance, but public works. That's the one I meant, okay. DBW, Thank public you. works. Okay. So do you want it to go to committee or do you want it to go to, to DPW? At this point, I'll just go to the DPW. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, because he would need to appropriate Yeah, funding. so you should go to DB, send it to our committee because it, then we could say send it because you need appropriation to okay. do it. Okay, all right. You can't so, just go and do it. Okay, Councillor McAuliffe was right, so we'll go to Public Works. Correct. Thank you. Well, that's what DB done, I meant by that. Yeah. Sorry. This, so yeah, this, let's move it on. I don't want to take up a lot of time here, but this is also a narrow street and there's, it's heavily traveled. And without the curb, uh, cars go up on the lawn. And if people are walking, or if there is any type of um, lawn mowing, lawn mowing, it becomes kind of dangerous. So, yeah. thank you. Thanks, You're welcome. Sarah. Any other comments? All in favor? Oppose. The motion passes. Be order that the ordinance committee meet to discuss public notifications on issues involving one-way streets. Councilor Costello. Uh, motion that the order be received and referred to the ordinance subcommittee for a public hearing. Motion made, is for a public, motion made and second that the order be received and sent to the ordinance committee for a public hearing on the motion. Uh, Councilor Laflamme and I have discussed this in regards to one-way streets just to make sure that when there is a change in the street or the proposed change, right now the laws indicate that we don't have to do public notifications and I reviewed that also with the superintendent of public works. So we can have a discussion if we should expand public notices for one-way streets. Thank you. Thank you. If I may, uh, if I can speak for a minute, all in favor? Thank you, guys. I just want to make a note that at this meeting, um, we did discuss this with the uh, DBW, uh, with Liz, and she's going to look at a radius of what's best, not just for uh, Eversource, for anybody that's doing any work in the street, that the notification would affect certain streets around it for everybody. So we'll have a uniform idea of when uh, people are using, uh, closing the streets or making one way. Thank you. All in favor of sending it? Opposed, the motion passes. Be in order that the new directional signs be placed at the bend on La Riviera <coughs> Drive near 111. Councilor Costello. Yes, uh, motion that the order be received and referred to the ordinance committee for a public hearing. Motion made and second that the order be received and sent to the ordinance committee for a public hearing on the motion. This is safety, this is a curve on La Riviera and people are concerned that all the drivers can't see the curve properly. Thank you. Any other comments? Seeing none, all in favor? Thank Opposed? You. The motion passes. 
We have an ordinance to add to the following in schedule. Parking prohibited here to corner Edmond Street. Councilor Krampitz. Motion that the order be received, take its first reading, and be sent to the Ordinance Committee for a public hearing. Motion made second that the order be received, sent to the Ordinance Committee for its first reading for a public hearing. On the motion. Yeah, we're having some issues uh, where uh, Edmund goes into to Broadway and uh, was suggested about uh, making at least one portion of it at that intersection. Um, no parking, so we'll take it up in committee. Thank you. Any other comments? Seeing none, all in favor? Aye. Opposed, the motion passes. Okay. We have an application for a new special permit under section 275-9L3 for the municipal zoning ordinance for the purpose of yeah, renewal right of a special permit granted on 81120, location of property 38-52 Front Street. Name of applicant PAH Properties. Councillor Balakir. Motion to receive the uh, new special permit application before the zoning subcommittee. Motion made and second that the new application, special permit application be received and sent to the zoning committee for a public hearing on the motion. And in addition on the motion to the planning department, engineering and building for public hearing, we'll take this up in committee. Thank you. Any other comments? All in favor? Opposed, the motion passes. And lastly, we have the election call for the September 6th state primary. Uh, Council Libri. Motion to accept the election call for September 6, 2022 state primary. Most, motion made second to uh, the election call for Tuesday, September 6, 2022 for the state primary. On the motion. And on the motion and also move the city council meeting to Thursday, September 8, 2022. Also move the, the city council meeting to September 8th, 2022, on the motion. And this is uh, the state primary falls on our uh, meeting night. Uh, so this is just uh, move it so we don't have to. Uh, Thank you very much. Any other comments? Good. All in favor? Opposed? The motion has it. Councilor Brooks. Yes. All set, Councilor Flam. Thank you very much. Uh, Councilor Lopez. Uh, my condolences to the family of the folks who passed away, uh, the two folks who passed away on uh, the car accident on, at the bottom of a metal, uh, metal Memorial Drive. Um, it's very sad and we do take speeding uh, very seriously. We take distracted driving seriously. Um, so my condolences to the family. Um, also, on a lighter note, I'd like to thank everyone who came out to the uh, Chicopee National Night Out. Uh, it was a wonderful showing and I, we Ward 3 is happy to host that. Um, uh, not only is it my ward, but it's also the mayor's ward, and he won't let me forget that. So uh, we're really happy to host that. It's one of the greatest events in Chicopee. Uh, speaking to residents, residents would really love to see more of those type of, types of events. I don't think some residents realize how much work goes into planning something like that, but uh, we will do our best to uh, ensure that we have more opportunities to gather as a community in that manner. And thank you for supporting it, and we uh, know that next year it's gonna be uh, bigger and better. Thank you to the committee who put it together. It was a lot of work. Uh, it was really well done. Um, and if, if you attended, you know it was really well done. All the vendors, it was bigger than it's ever been. So uh, thank you for having that, and we're happy to host that. Thank you. Thank you. Councilor Cushane. Yes, just a point of information during uh, public input, it was mentioned that the resident of Thomas Street is I'm not in touch with her. We are in constant contact with email and whatnot. So unfortunately, you can't always give the answer that people want. So that's how they respond, unfortunately. And just remember with upcoming heat to look out for your neighbors and look out for your neighbor's animals. Uh, make sure everybody's safe during the heat. Thank you. Thank you. Councilor Zigorowski. The first thing I'd like to do is congratulate and say good luck to Julie Kapulas. She's the head of the uh, Chicopee Chamber of Commerce for three years. She'll be leaving on August 19th. So I wish her the best and congratulate her. Yeah. She did a good job. I know we worked with her several times in different things. On another note, uh, you see something, I always said, give the police department a call, 592-6341. Saying that, that accident that happened at the Pride Station, a guy in a truck was going 75 miles an hour down Memorial Drive. Speeding, that's one of our major things in the city, but that's all over the city, that's all over different communities, Hoyoke, Springfield, South Alley, all of them. Our traffic bureau is out there. I've spoken to the chief about it. The tickets are being given, but they just can't cover the entire city all the time. So all I get best thing I can say to you, slow down, please. 
If you've got a problem with a certain street, call the police department. Let somebody know what's going on. You see something, say something, but slow down in your driving. I see people driving just to go from one red light to another. You think they were on the Indianapolis 500. We got the speed bumps. They're going to work. Give it a chance. Some people are complaining about it already. It slows traffic down. If people want to fly over and ruin their cars and motorcycles, that's their problem. But they do work. Okay. Have a good summer. We'll see you in September. Thank you. Councilor Balakir. Yeah, thank you. I, I want to continue to thank the health care workers for the great job they're doing. We still have a COVID crisis. Uh, another situation is the Ukrainian crisis. It's extremely dangerous. If you can pray for peace, we appreciate it. And if possible, please donate to local organizations. Uh, speeding has been referenced. Uh, again, kids are still out on vacation and everybody else, so please slow down. Uh, the speed tables that I worked on over four years ago have finally come to fruition. They're near completion. We're still gonna be doing some striping and some additional signage. And if they work and they are slowing people down, we're gonna put them elsewhere in the city, but please slow down. And finally, I wanna thank the uh, National Night Out Committee for the great presentation that we had yesterday. It was great work by the city for all who helped. Thank you. Thank you. Councilor Tillotson. <clears throat> There's no question about it. Speeding is one of our big problems in the city. The police are doing the best they can. They're giving out more tickets than they've given out in the past. Well, be careful. I happen to be going home that when that accident occurred. Uh, I got tied up for half an hour, 15 or 20 minutes or more than that maybe, uh, as they try to figure out exactly what happened. But that's one of the worst accidents that I've ever seen since I've been in Chicopee. It's a, it was really a, the car that got hit, that it was from the front to the back, it, could, it was hit. I mean, it was absolutely, from what I could see, you couldn't salvage anything from that car. And I'd like to hopefully pray for that family uh, because they went out probably for a normal day and they're not, they're not, coming, home to, uh, not coming home because somebody was going too fast. It's sad, so drive more carefully. The kids will be going back to school in another month, so, so slow down and get ready for that as well. Thank, Thank you. you. Con Councilor Bree. Yeah, my condolences also to the family of that accident. Uh, it was a tragedy. Um, I hate to use the word speed kills, but you know this um, really hits home. It really did, and uh, I know as a rule, people don't go 75 miles an hour um, you know, down Memorial Drive, but you know, they do go fast. And I know our officers are out there. I see them more often. Uh, they're pulling people over on McKinstry Avenue, on Grattan Street, and I'm sure once Granby Road's gonna get paved, they're gonna you know, work on uh, speeding on Granby Road. So I applaud our officers bit for being out there. Uh, and drive safe, drive slow. Thank you. Thank you. Councilor Roy. Yeah, echoing uh, what some of the councilors were saying about speeding is this is a problem throughout the city. Uh, just want to remind everybody out there that uh, school is still out, kids are still running around. Uh, please, please, please watch your speed. And this is your city. Take pride in it. Thank you. Thank you. Councilor Krampus. Yeah, um, again, focused on, on speed. You know, you don't need to rush. Uh, a lot of young children out there. Um, unfortunately a lot of times playing in the road uh but you know you, you need to be careful and uh you know we're halfway through summer so um uh please enjoy the rest of your summer thanks thank you concert costello thank you um president Lafem. i also uh will offer my condolences to the family um that uh were killed in that tragic accident and i also want to send a special thank you to Councillor Balakir and to, uh, to Mayor View because they have been advocates to make sure those speed tables, those speed bumps were put on Front Street. And we can see the change and that's a positive change. And without Councillor Balakir advocating for four years, <coughs> that may not have happened and with the backing of mayor view in his office thank you thank you councillor mccullough 
Thank you, Mr. President. I want to congratulate everyone involved uh, in National Night Out. It was a wonderful event, um, expanded, uh, more vendors, more people, uh, and a great atmosphere bringing the community uh, together. Um, I want to remind everyone to vote in the September 6th primary. It's an important uh, election for Chickabee. Uh, looking forward to seeing everybody out there. And uh, next meeting, I will uh, be showing up with some new jewelry. Uh, this is my last meeting as a single individual. So, uh, you know, I'll try not to flash it too much. <laughs> I'll see you guys at the next one. Have a great rest of the month. Thank you. Concert Domas. Thank you. The uh, public hearing for the, uh, the City Council public hearing for the proposed Burnett Road truck stop is Monday, August 8th. Uh, so for any of my constituents that want to attend and have your voice heard, please attend that meeting. Uh, Monday, August 8th, we'll be here in City Hall, uh, 6.30. Um, I also, again, I want to thank the at-large counselors, uh, the Mayor's Office, and uh, Ward 6 School Committee Rep Shumsky again for the, uh, their efforts on the Litwin School neighborhood. I appreciate that. Again, that's the neighborhood I live in. I look forward to working uh, in collaboration with that. I spoke with Counselor uh, Zigorowski. He mentioned the public hearing for that will likely be in September. Um, so I'll inform residents when, uh, when that comes around. Um, and uh, I also want to echo what Councilor Costello said. Thank you, uh, George Ballack here. Thank you for your uh, efforts on the, uh, on the speed bumps. I think Front Street is much safer because of your efforts. And hopefully that will be a model for the city. Uh, for Ward 6 voting, um, I want to thank the Mayor's Office. I want to thank uh, Keith Rattel. A huge thank you. And uh, a thank you to Wagner and uh, Eric Lesser. Uh, for their efforts. We were very close to having Ward 6 voters who normally vote at KFC having to vote at Sheridan Street, which would have been terrible. Um, so I'm very happy that uh, you know, they were able to get it passed through the uh, state legislature so that uh, there would be no interruption in voting in Ward 6. Uh, please vote in the state primary. And I also I just want to thank the Mayor's Office for National Night Out. I, was, I attended and it was a very good event. Thank you. Thank you. If I, if the will board, I'd like to just say a couple words, if I could. I too want to send my condolences to the family that uh, lost their lives uh, in that accident on the bottom of Memorial Drive. But I also want to send my condolences to uh, Patrolman uh, Maynard. Uh, he lost that night. He lost his son on a on a bike. Um, so um, unfortunately, um, you know things happen. But uh, we send our condolences on behalf of the city council to our patrolman who lost his um, his son. So with that, and the also the national night out, I want to make uh, it was great. We had a great time. We didn't have to cook hot dogs this year, but we got to walk around and, and meet people and see people. And I want to thank the uh, Mass State Police for bringing the hot helicopter uh, for the kids because they really enjoyed that. So with that said, I'll take a motion to adjourn. Motion and second to adjourn. All in favor? Aye. And the motion passes. Thank you all.